All right, so um, what we'll do for public comment, uh, members of the public will have to use the raise your hand feature on Zoom. You can find that uh, by clicking on your name on the list of participants and uh, clicking on the raise your hand uh, button. I will call your name or whatever your login name is on the screen and you'll have three minutes to address the board. Please start by stating your name and your address. Uh, after three minutes, if you need additional time, we can grant it. Um, if you do take up the additional time, at the end of the six minutes, because we'll grant you an additional three minutes, we will mute your microphone and then we'll move on to the next person. Um, I think that covers it all. Did I get it right? I think you got it. All right. All right, so we'll go over here. First, we have L, excuse me, Ellen uh, LeChapelle, and should be able to talk. To unmute. Oh, thank you, uh, Chair Rodriguez and school board members. Uh, my name is Ellen LaChapelle and I'm the vice president of the base union, which represents all custodians, uh, bus drivers, bus assistants, cafeteria staff, secretaries, IT and maintenance workers in the district. I'm reading this message for our president, Liz Bryant tonight. Although the work of our members is always critical for students, it is especially essential now. Our base employees are the frontline workers preparing meals daily for thousands of students in the city, distributing and delivering the meals, sanitizing and disinfecting the buildings, providing laptops and technical advice to students and parents. Our secretaries keep student records, grades, and important information organized and accessible. Many of our members are in the schools, kitchens and buses, providing these essential services while directly interacting with students and families. We take extra precautions using social distancing, wearing face masks and protective gear, and always bring a positive message to the community members we see daily. Although our members know their jobs put them at a higher risk and exposure, they are there to provide much needed services to the students and families during this very stressful time. Our members are often perceived as the bottom of the totem pole. And I ask that you recognize how essential our services are to the district as you make decisions about next year's budget. Our work will be even more critical during the year ahead when we need to do everything possible to keep our students, families, and staff stay safe and healthy. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Alan. Next, we'll go to uh, Pamela King. Thank you. My name's Pam King, and I live at 10 Marlowe Street in Portland, Maine. My daughter's in fourth grade, and she's at Longfellow Elementary. Um, I've been teaching in the Brunswick School District for over 20 years, um, so I have an education background. And I am here to ask about the cuts to the fourth and fifth grade Spanish program across the district. Um, and I am in support of keeping Spanish uh, in the elementary schools. I have a couple questions. I know that the Spanish immersion program at LISA um, offers a great opportunity to some of the students in the district. My question is what the cost is of running that program. I, I understand that those teachers are teaching um, standalone classes, but I'm wondering if there's any additional cost to having that program above and beyond paying the teacher's salaries. My other question is for the students who are at Lyseth Elementary, will they, who are not in the Spanish immersion program, will their Spanish classes be cut next year? Um, it's, I'm also wondering about the Spanish curriculum at Ocean Ave Elementary School. Um, there's been some talk that that is going to still be offered at Ocean Ave because they are an international baccalaureate school. Um, so I have those questions about it. Um, and I will just say that if those, um, if Spanish is being offered to students in, in those schools, it does feel inequitable for the other eight elementary schools within the system. Um, we spend a lot of money on ESL in this district and uh, offering English as a second language, but I do think it's so important to offer 
a second language to our students who speak English at home. It really help them, helps to broaden their experience uh, and help them to think multiculturally. A lot of us stay in Portland to give our students a multicultural experience that they won't get in some of the surrounding districts. Um, but I just feel like it's a shame to cut Spanish. And I know I speak for a lot of other parents um, in our area. I think the last thing that I want to say is that my daughter's uh, Spanish teacher has been working, going above and beyond to provide experiences for the students while they've been at home since we've gone to at-home learning. And it's one of the classes that my daughter looks forward to. Um, it's very interactive. And if, it's, um, if we're in quarantine in the fall, it will be uh, a really unfortunate class to lose from the Google Classroom suite. So I think that's it. Um, and I would just ask those questions about the immersion program and Ocean Ave. Thank you, Pamela. Um, so I wanna just, I wanna take a moment just to be really clear so that expectations are, are, are realistic. Um, during public comment, um, we don't usually have a back and forward. Um, I appreciate the questions that you asked um, and, and they have been part of our discussions, Pamela. Um, but it'd be really difficult if, if we were to have a back and forth with everyone that addresses the board. Um, but but again, um, I think you asked some questions that, that have been reviewed and, and we should be able to find information, um, or there is information in, in where the finance uh, budget documents are on our website that specifically answers pretty much everything that you asked about the Spanish, um, the immersion program in LISA, the IB, in Ocean and, and the other um, elementary classes that you talked about. Um, all right, we'll go uh, next, we'll go to um, Zachary Hayden. I'm trying to unmute you. I think we lost Zachary. Oh. He jumped to the bottom, so I'm going to see if we can get him back up. Hi, thank you. There we go. Hear me? Now we can hear you. OK, good. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Uh, my name is Zachary Hyden. I'm the legal director at the ACLU of Maine, uh, as well as the parent of two Portland public school students. Uh, my children are receiving excellent educations in Portland schools, and I want to thank the superintendent and the school. I live street. Um, even before the COVID-19 pandemic, young people in the United States Exactly. We're we're having that. Zachary, exactly. your audio is not. Um, it's breaking up. We don't have a good connection of you. I'm not able to hear you well. Okay, I'll send in my comments. Yeah, really sorry about that. It's just not. that I'll send writing. Appreciate that, Zachary. Sorry about that. Right. We'll go next to um, Caroline Petri. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. There we go. Great. My name's Caroline Petrie, and I am a science teacher at Portland High School. And I live on Exchange Street in Portland. And I just want to thank um, everyone who's doing 
uh, an incredible job thinking through this in deep ways. You do not have um, an easy job in without a pandemic to deal with, and adding that on top of it is very um, uh, exponentially complicating your process, and I really appreciate you putting in these long hours for us. Um, I do want to just continue to encourage you to make sure that you are thinking about making cuts as far away from the learner as possible and um, making sure that you are keeping that equity issue in front of you and um, equalizing things as best you can across the district. Um, it's really important that the students feel as little of this process as possible. Um, they come to school for lots of different reasons, not just to learn academics, but for social and emotional needs and to socialize through co-curriculars and to expand their horizons. And I really want to make sure that you're keeping that front and center. Um, and it seems as though that's um, pretty apparent with most of you and I really appreciate it, but I'm just going to encourage you to keep doing that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, next, we'll go to Erica King. Good evening. Um, Superintendent Botanon, Chair Roberto Rodriguez, and members of the board and the committee, thank you for your efforts to strengthen and sustain public education in Portland right now, especially during this pandemic. You've been um, a bedrock to this community, and I have deep respect and admiration for anyone that chooses to serve. Uh, in this context, I am a mother of two children in King Middle School and a member of the Portland Parent Advisory Committee and a resident of Portland on Catherine Street. And I recognize the impossible and difficult uh, resource constraints decisions before you. And so in that context, I'd like to speak to the issue of school resources, resource officers in Portland Public Schools. And I'd love to start by acknowledging that we want all of our incredible children, staff, and administrators to feel safe in our schools, and they deserve to experience safety equitably. However, the district's data points to widespread, long-standing, and persistent achievement and discipline gaps, which have really precipitated the declaration of Portland's promise and our equity goals um, that I know this board is very committed to. And in this resource-constrained moment, we cannot afford to ignore the differential experiences of safety and the impact of police presence in our school. Without context and before this call, I, I asked my two black sons, if you had to vote for whether or not there'd be um, police officers in your high school next year, would you vote yes or no? And without blinking, both of them said no. And I want you to know that my their father and my husband works in the field of corrections and law enforcement, and they have respect for it. And we understand and appreciate and respect the critical importance of a strong MOU and working relationship between the Portland Public Schools and the Portland Police Department. And I deeply empathize with teachers and administrators who are advocating to preserve all staff supports in buildings right now especially ones with the word school resource in the title who have the role flexibility and the authority to spend their time sort of bouncing through the days dealing with challenging discipline or painting pictures with students or monitoring doorways in a physical plant that might need some structural adaptations. I can understand how staff would want and need that in this environment and context. Yet within the context of Portland, Portland's promises, I understand it. This appears to be a vote and a decision about safety, equity, and resource allocation. And I'm urging you to consider that an SRO officer is not the only way to accomplish safety in our schools. In fact, national research and local data and youth voice from communities most directly impacted by these disparities tell us it's probably not even the best way to accomplish safety. The student subpopulations that are indicated in Portland's promise are already more likely to be adversely impacted in this short-term safety as well as their long-term economic and social well-being right now. Um, so I urge you to look at other ways to do that and to you look at the MOU and to prioritize resources for our staff 
and for our co-curriculars and COLA resources in deepening equity gaps right now. I mean, strat closing equity gaps right now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go to Tess Conroy. Um, so I'm trying to get Tess to allow to talk, um, but it's giving me an option to promote him to panelists to do that. Not the other, with the other folks, I was just able to allow them to talk. Um, not sure why that is. Oh. Did I lose him? I would suggest you allow them in as panelists, and then we can, um, have, you know, have them leave afterwards. I think I lost them though. They're not here. I promoted them, Robert. Robert. Oh. Tess, go ahead. You you have the floor. Te um, Tess Conroy. I don't know if they can hear us. All right, why don't we move on to the next one and then we'll see if Tess comes back. Uh, we'll go to Brendan McQuaid. Hello, how are you doing? You got it, Brendan. My name is uh, Brendan McQuaid. I live at uh, Four Candle with Paris in uh, Portland, and uh, my son go my son goes to Rowe Elementary, and I'm a criminology professor uh, at USM. I'm here to encourage the school board to do their best to protect core educational programs and teacher salaries in their budget decisions before the school resource officer program. As a uh, criminologist. I can tell you that um, having police in schools is bad policy. Study after study shows that schools with police have more suspensions, expulsions, and arrests than schools without them. The students that are punished are disproportionately working class, of color, or disabled. This is why um, many scholars and activists school uh, refer to the school to prison pipeline for many students school is a can be an introduction to uh, processes of criminalization that will follow them throughout their lives and uh, limit their choices so in this time of increased hardship i hope you will do the right thing and direct our limited resources towards maintaining the parts of our um, educational system that we know work that aren't marred by controversy, that don't have uh, stigma surrounding them. Uh, you know, do your best to please, um, you know, pay our te teachers well and, um, you know, protect uh, core educational services. Uh, thank you. Brendan, uh, next we'll go to Betsy. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Betsy Faskimeshi, and I live at Three Peaceful Place in Keniba. I work as a parent community specialist for the Spanish speakers in our district. I would like to comment on several things. First, the curriculum budget. Streamlining our math curriculum across the district is a benefit for all students. The community I work with tends to move a great deal due to economic situations. This is going to increase with the current pandemic. Having the same curriculum across all of our schools would provide continuity of learning for students. 
thus making it more equitable. I also work at central office. We have been affected by the previous budget cuts profoundly. There are people at the central office who are now doing jobs that were initially hired, that they were not initially hired for. They are taking on the job responsibilities for two or three other people. We are all, we are in this together. Sometimes we must make personal sacrifices for the greater good. We all want the best for our students. They are our future. Giving up COLAs and contractual increases are necessary for the greater good of our students and district. Giving these items up keeps a coworker employed. These are personal perks that do not affect our students. To me, a 2.5% COLA increase is not equitable to others in our district, especially since the COLA for Portland is 1.6%, as Ms. Morioni pointed out. I recognize the teachers are working hard, but so do the other employees in, public, in Portland Public Schools who are paid hourly, including custodial staff and food service workers and staff in my department who go above and beyond to ensure that students have their devices, access to access learning, access food, counsel families and help with assignments to our um, multilingual students. We answer the phone after school hours and weekends to help students and their families in crisis. We go above and beyond without concern for time and compensation because we feel communities of color cannot, because we feel our community cannot afford to fail our children. The parent community specialists are severely underpaid for the work and value we bring to our district. We and the other central office staff do not have steps. We only get COLAs. A distributed sacrifice by all is a fair process in these unprecedented times. I am grateful to have a job and that I have the opportunity to support students and their families, many of whom, by the way, are losing their jobs and taking pay cuts. This is true all across the country. It is time to come together and sacrifice for the greater good. Thank you for your time and for listening. Thank you, Betsy. Uh, next we'll go to uh, Maple Rastra. Hi, uh, can you hear me? So um, I am a Reiki parent or Reiki alum and I'm now a professor of anthropology at Colby and I just wanted to first um, thank the board for your hard work on this. It's really, it, it's moving to hear the thoughtfulness and care you're putting into these uh, very difficult trade-offs and decisions you need to make. So uh, much appreciation. Um, I wanted to just speak to the the question of eliminating SROs. Um, um, I am strong. I want to. I want to speak strongly in support of that. From all the research um, I've read related to the presence of SROs, they first turn um, many incidents, which would be school discipline, um, you know, limited to school disciplinary matters, into criminal matters, and put students on a pathway um, to much more serious legal. Um, difficulties than they need have, and the and what really makes this of particular concern is the really disproportionate ways um, that SROs have have affected students of color in public schools, um, as well as working class um, students who are much much more likely um, to face um, criminal charges in school settings than than other students. Um, so I, I think this is a positive step, even aside from the really difficult um, budgetary decisions that, that you're forced to, to reckon with at this moment. So um, I think it's one of the rare win-win uh, moves that can be made at this point. Um, and I'd also just mention that I think the presence of, of SROs actually makes many students feel um, less safe in the schools. I mean, my, my 
son is only in the third grade. He, he just stopped by to wonder why I was still staring at the computer at this hour. And he asked me what I was doing. And I, I explained that there would be um, potentially SROs, police officers in his school when he reached um, high school. And he is a student who's very enthusiastic about school. And he was horrified to hear this and said, then I don't want to go. So I really think that this creates a climate of, of fear and suspicion that isn't necessary in our schools, which um, I'm, I'm very proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go back to Tess Conroy. Uh, we're getting through the chat, um, see if his mic uh, is working now. Tess? I think we might have, like, the microphone might not be turned on. I'm not sure why um, we can't hear Tess. All right, let me, just in, to keep things going, let me see, let me move on to the next person on the, um, on the list. Uh, Erica Lee Winship. And um, Erica, go ahead. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, good evening. My name is Eric Lee Winship. I live at 26 Fall Lane in Portland. Um, I teach social studies at Portland High School, and I'm the parent of a Portland High sophomore and Lyman Moore eighth grader and a lifelong resident of Portland. I did speak last night, but I'd like to clarify my position on a few things um, and also address some new things that seem to be on the table. First, I'd like to address co-curriculars. Um, I completely understand, understand that cuts need to come from across the board and I'm willing to accept a fair reduction in co-curriculars. However, I vehemently oppose anything over around $50,000. Um, I see that as too devastating to this district's ability to support and cultivate strong programs and opportunities for our middle and high school students. As board members know, as board members know based on the email I've sent, um, I've been asking a lot of questions about what's happening with co-curriculars, and I applaud Aaron's effort to find efficiencies and to come to a more balanced and fair approach to cuts across the school's co-curricular budgets. That being said, co-curriculars are critical to the social and, emotional, social and emotional well-being of our students, and many of our students form close relationships with their coaches and advisors, which was one of our major goals as a district in 2019. So it sort of baffles me as to why we're seeking to cut $140,000 and then potentially looking to go for an additional $370,000 out of the co-curricular budget. Um, I believe this will devastate both Portland and Deering and high schools for many years to come. Um, last night, Ms. Figdor said that she was so excited for fourth grade math as she fought to keep that in the budget. And I totally get that because my son is so excited to play at Hadlock Field and my daughter is so excited to play high school field hockey and participate in student government. So I'm asking you to please not take those opportunities away from my children. Um, I also think we have to consider the opportunity gap we'd be creating with the elimination of so many co-curriculars. Our most disadvantaged students would suffer. Um, our more advantaged students would have the luxury of paying to play in privatized sports programs, but most of our students don't have that luxury. Um, so for me, you know, cutting co-curriculars in order to fulfill other aspects of the central, uh, excuse me, of the Portland Promise, just seems like a false choice, um, as Mr. Burke acknowledged earlier. Um, as for the SRO cut that is supported by some members and some members of the public have been speaking to, I have the unfortunate distinction of being the staff member referenced in one of the bolded scenarios I sent you in the letter signed by 95 of my colleagues at Portland High School in support of our SRO. In the spring of 2018, a student made a threat and a brought a weapon into my classroom. 
Officer Mike Bennis is a major reason that scenario did not end in tragedy. I can assure you that I lost sleep for months wondering what I would have done if a student had pulled a weapon out of their backpack in my classroom. Would I have made the right choices to ensure the safety of my students? Did I have what it takes to put my own life on the line for my students? If I did, what would that say about me as a mother? How would my husband explain that to my own children? If I did have it, what it takes, if I didn't have what it takes, excuse me, um, how would I face the family of a student who was injured or wounded that day? I wrestle with these questions two years later. The reality is that high school teachers and students face a heightened threat every day in terms of their safety. How dare you compromise my safety at work and more importantly, the safety of my children, Liam and Aaron. And Erica, are you almost, do you need an extra three minutes? A minute. Go for it. Um, and all their classmates at Portland and Deering. Ultimately, um, I think that I would probably take a bullet to protect your children and I'm asking you to keep an SRO in my workplace to ensure my safety and my children's safety. Um, finally, the last thing I guess I just wanted to say is I'm completely baffled by the cut due to a reduction in enrollment at PHS. Uh, based on data I saw today, we're graduating 193 and have an incoming class of 207. So from what I can see, there's no reduction in enrollment at Portland High School next year. I know based on my work on the leadership team and as a cluster coordinator that there are hundreds of unfilled course requests and too many kids sitting in study halls. Um, so again, you know, I totally understand the excitement um, for I am math and for revamping the math curriculum, but that cost and the cost of a math coach doesn't sit well with me when my own children can't get the art and music electives and other courses they've signed up for. There seems to be a willingness among many board members to pay for elementary investments by promoting high school cuts. Um, although Mr. Rodriguez just recently spoke against this and I appreciate that. Um, it doesn't feel right to rob Peter to pay Paul. I think if we go a little bit deeper line by line into this budget, we can find other savings that don't directly impact, impact kids. And I'm gonna beg you to keep looking. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Erica. Um, next, uh, I'm sorry, we'll go to uh, Johanna Burden. <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Johanna Burden. I live at 26 May Street in Portland. I'm a taxpayer, parent of a sophomore at Portland High School, and school counselor at Portland High School. Thank you to the school board, superintendent, and central office and other leadership staff for your work on this budget. I know this is really, really tough work. I'd like to talk about four different issues. First, I would like to express my grave concern for the possibility of the removal of the school resource officer at Portland High, despite near unanimous support from the faculty and staff at Portland High, as described in our letter to this board last week about the critical importance of this role, please heed our voices. Listen to students and other parent input about the approachability, efficacy, and need for Officer Bennis for all students. As a parent and employee, I feel Officer Bennis makes PHS a safer place. This feeling of safety when multiplied over students, parents, and staff is worth much more than the investment the district makes currently. Officer Bennis is not placing students of color on the school to prison pipeline. He is striving to keep students of color off that pipeline. Please instead focus on school and district policies, practices, and budgets that will more directly impact our, impact our Portland Promise equity goal and the lessening of the school to prison pipeline. Issue, issue two, putting co-curricular clubs in JV and first, high, first team, first uh, high school sports, and likely many middle school sports on the chopping block makes no sense from a whole student or equity standpoint. Keep any budget cuts away from people coaching or advising our children. Issue three, for me, no way on a cost of living COLA cut in the next year for PAS, PEA staff, ed techs, base staff, food service people, secretaries, custodians, etc. This year, please quit liking and sharing those teacher memes if you don't truly understand why. You are for teachers or you're against them. This move would be against teachers and other frontline staff, period. Respect is shown in our culture with money and teachers and other school staff are already underpaid. Though our top priority as a school or district staff is not money, this is an important issue. Issue four, for many reasons, I join you, many of you, in wanting Deering to remain a viable and strong high school. 
but they are simply overstaffed given their population and needs as we currently allow at our high schools, even if a new formula, including free lunch and multilingual student data were included. If you plan to implement such a new demographic based formula, please do it for all schools as I look forward to my neighborhood elementary school, Reiki, receiving more staff and resources. As a Portland High parent and staff member, I want PHS students not hurt because we have an idea that daring staff and students need or should be rewarded with very, perhaps obscenely, small classes or much more art or elective time because of a supposed one-year change. But PHS students from those same demographic pockets do not. Deering has lost numbers across demographics for the last two years, in part because it is graduating much larger classes than the new ones coming in. That's just math. Leaving their staffing as proposed is terribly unfair and further doesn't make any sense from a budget perspective. Please ask for details about the proposed class section sizes at Deering next year. I promise it will be illuminating. If you do choose to keep Deering's uh, staff, you need uh, 15, minutes? 15 seconds. Please make sure those extra staff resources are di actually directed to equity and achievement for our multilingual and low income students. Not all students, including the most privileged ones, as those staffing resources are currently planned to be allocated. As a city resident and taxpayer, I want those plans and the use of those extra staff to be transparent and not just a shuffle of shells and papers to look compliant at such a request. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Johanna. Uh, next, we'll go to uh, Juanita McDonald. Hi, can you hear me? Gotcha. Perfect. Um, my name is Juanita. I live on Lester Drive in Portland. I have a really simple, I think, question um, regarding the co-curriculars in regards to athletics. Um, I have two daughters that go to Portland High School. Have you guys considered or tossed around the idea of maybe combining some of the high school athletics? Would that reduce any of the field fees or, I don't know, coaching costs or transportation? That's a question for anyone on the board. So Juanita, I just to um, kind of go over it again, the public comment uh, is not really intended to be a back and forward uh, discussion. It, 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 you know, as you can imagine, it could be difficult. Um, let's say right now we have 200 people in attendance to, 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 to do that. Um, so, so it, it'd be uh, a bad precedent for us to, to start doing it now, given that there's other people waiting. Um, I will say that we have had that discussion, what you talked about, um, as part of our co-curricular, um, conversations. Am I able to say anything? Yeah, so you still have, we, we I'm going to pause the time real quick and just go over this again. Um, we, you have three minutes to address the board. Um, you had the time running, so you still have about a minute and a half left. You have to say anything? Um, if you want to keep addressing us, but again, just wanted to be clear that that is not intended to be a back and forth um, as part of the public comment. Okay, so you still have a minute and a half if you want to keep talking to the board. Okay, so I guess it's more of just a follow up that probably you could answer. Um, is there any information that we can find online about those discussions? And will that be something that can be addressed during upcoming hearings, public hearings? I think that were listed in maybe June or July. Um, yeah, yes, I think we, go ahead, Superintendent. Look like up, Ms. McDonald, if you, if you don't mind emailing me, I will get you an answer to that question. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Superintendent. All right, next we're going to Allison uh, Villani. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Allison Villani. I live at 20 Salem Street in Portland, Maine. I'm a Portland uh, city parent and a teacher. And uh, I understand your passion for curriculum. But we don't need to buy a curriculum to provide relevant, engaging grade level learning with appropriate supports and scaffolds. Um, talking uh, about the consistent approach to teaching across the district, that's a, a one size does not fit all. 
and teachers have their own styles, which I think is great. Um, research actually shows that teachers and staff and adults at schools and the relationships that they have with students, which of course includes coaches, are the highest predictor of success, not curriculum. So everyone loves a good curriculum, but I suggest that you trust and use your teachers, let them be creative, and watch their students soar. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Uh, next, we'll go to Gavin Gilder. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, loud to. Hi, my name is Gavin Glider. Uh, I'm a social studies teacher at Portland High School. I'm also the advisor for the student council, the coach of the mock trial team, and the coach of the girls tennis team. Uh, I have several points that, that I'd like to address. Um, firstly, in addition to all of those things, I, I also work several other jobs. Um, I, I enjoy all of the jobs I do, but we are in tough times, and right now, uh, this is my only job, and my, my income is based on having multiple jobs. If I could just be a teacher, I would be, if, if, that is, if that's what I could survive on, but I can't. So that's something you need to keep in mind is that most of your teachers are not just teachers. They have to be other things too because of uh, the cost of living and, and what we actually make. I'll tell you right now, I usually work 60 to 90 hours a week just as a teacher, grading, designing curriculum, and doing all the things that I need to do to make sure my students get the best education possible. The work that I've been doing since we've gone remote is actually in excess of that. I'm, I'm putting more time in now that we're remote than less time. So I, I think that's something to bear in mind, but that's actually not one of my points. The first point I want to make is in defense of the SROs. Mike Bennis is one of the most incredible people that I've ever met, and I think a lot of students will, would agree with that. I teach a criminal justice course at Portland High School, so I get to interact with Mike a lot. Um, in terms of having him as part of that curriculum. He is one of the, the perfect examples that exists of what the relationship between police and society should be. He's a mentor to so many of our students. He's a smiling face when our kids are walking around the building. He's a, he's a waving hand. He is, he is positivity encapsulated. Um, and, and losing someone like Mike Bennis would be devastating to the Portland High School community. The second point I want to make is about co-curriculars. Uh, I am a coach, but I want to talk more about uh, non-sport co-curriculars because I'm involved with those as well. What, one of the first points I want to make is in regards to some of the concerns that have been brought up about uh, things at, at Portland High School versus Deering High School. There's a lot of comment about, well, what additional cuts, uh, let's cut less from Deering and more from Portland because we need to preserve these opportunities at Deering for the future. But I want you to keep in mind that by doing that, what you're saying is we're gonna take opportunities away from the kids at Portland that have it right now. Let's preserve something that could exist again at Deering in the future by getting rid of something that exists right now at Portland. An example I can give you of this would be mock trial. Five years ago, the Portland High School mock trial team did not exist. It, it hadn't existed for some, for some time. And thanks to the efforts of a number of students, we were able to start a mock trial team, something that we do not actually have an allocated stipend for. We're entering our fifth consecutive year with having a mock trial team. Uh, Casco Bay has one as well. Uh, Deering, however, uh, has not been in the mock trial tournament uh, since Portland High School, at least, this had a mock trial team. Like I said, we're entering our fifth year, yet they have a stipend allocated for it. Although they have started the season with a the team, they have not yet competed in the tournament since we have had a team. So I, I'm sure as you go through those line items that you would see, there probably are things um, that exist in there uh, that, that it's more than just a one-year blip that, that haven't existed in, in some time. I also want to advocate on behalf of things like student government. I'm the advisor of the student council, which is the student government at Portland High School. Student government is an opportunity that is life changing for so many of your kids. They have the ability to rise as leaders in their school, advocate for things they believe in like social justice, and have meetings with administrators and, and uh, legislate their ideas. 
Gavin, are you, do you, are you almost, are you finishing up? Uh, yeah, what? about 60 seconds. All right, we'll do uh, it. Take, taking something like that away, uh, and, and if you cut co-curriculars the way you're talking about, something like that will go away. Taking that away from, from students would be devastating to so many. So, so bear in mind when you're, when you're talking about reducing co-curriculars, you're not just talking about getting rid of sports teams. You're talking about all of these other things like student government. Uh, so please bear that in mind. I know this isn't an easy job. Uh, I thank you so much for the work you're doing and uh, I, I don't envy the choices you have to make. So thank you. All right, next we'll go to uh, Josephine uh, uh, Bissimana. Good evening, everyone. My name is Josephine Bizimana. I'm a Poland public school staff at Montelingo, and I'm also a parent with three children and attending Waiki and King. I first want to thank each and everyone for the work you do, especially during this challenging time. I need to come back to the question of class size, even though it is off the table today. Uh, first of all, I don't know if there is any study showing uh, the student achievement in a small or large classroom size. We all, who uh, multilingual student, grew up in a large classroom size and we all su uh, succeeded. So the other thing I don't understand is the increase for callers, for, uh, for teachers and also privileging the uh, cutting the, the co-curricular for students. First of all, like for non-represented co-staff, uh, as for example, multilingual uh, staff and the central office staff, we are all underpaid, and some of us live in uh, public housing, uh, relying on public uh, assistance, so we don't understand why you prefer to raise a salary to a part of uh, a part of staff and the other staff is underprivileged but also cutting the co curriculum uh, for student will deepen the already existing cut, uh, gap between the multilingual student and the white middle class students and the other thing you talk about the uh, the whole student and the equity uh, for the whole uh, for the Poland public school students. I do not understand it because if you look at uh, the size, the how this, our students are affected with uh, uh, this COVID, it's obviously that student won't won't succeed even with the. Uh, with this uh, next school budget. And especially uh, the student who will be uh, affected will be the multilingual student and the lower income because they rely on those co curricula to succeed uh, academically and social emotionally. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine. Uh, next, we'll go to Rob O'Leary. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to speak to the, the questioning around the $140,000 cut. Um, for the past six years, as you know, I have been the co-curricular director at Portland High School. Um, Work hand in hand with the co-curricular director at Deering High School, Mel Craig in the past, now Michael Daly, um, and very aware of the budgets. For the past six years, um, Deering High School has received more funding in the co-curricular and the extracurricular budget um, because of the uh, per student um, cost that, that has been Deering having more students. Uh, when we had to make this cut of 140,000, we all work together to make this cut. Um, we we tried to keep it as far away from kids as possible, cutting teams that were not in existence over the past three to five years. So I just wanted to make that point um, because I'm not sure if that point has been um, has been made from either 
um, our administration uh, at Portland or the Daring administration. So um, it it's really working towards equaling um, and making the budgets more equal um, in both the extracurricular and the co-curricular budgets. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Mm -hmm. Uh, next, we'll go to, give me a second, sorry, uh, Ab Abdullahi Ali. Yes, um, how are you guys doing? My name is Abdul Ali. Um, I am a student at uh, USM right now. I'm also a justice policy intern. I'm also, I've also been working with Maine Inside Out. For the past seven years, we create performances and uh, do, do theater work with youth as previously incarcerated. Um, I'm also part of Maine Youth Justice Campaign. Um, and I'm, I'm also black, so I uh, grew up in Portland, went to Portland High School. Um, just the feeling of being a person of color uh, in society, period, after you see all the stuff that you see online and you see um, on TV and the news and whatnot. And just like going through the curriculum, um, you know, as you're you know, learning education and whatnot, you, you get a sense of trauma uh, that consistently just uh, rides with you and what happens is like no matter where you go um, if you have that sense of authority of, of, of police officers and whatnot it, that affects you one way or another I understand that things like will happen like when, when it's uh, when it's tragic when it comes to violence and whatnot but that's inevitable it's gonna happen everywhere but I believe that you know um, uh, there are other ways of protecting the school you know ha having like a, I don't know bulletproof uh, windows and doors and whatnot and I'm uh, just trying like getting approved to, to get inside the doors and whatnot but I think that um, I saw I uh, my bad <laughs> it's been a long day but I saw a post where it said that roughly 20 years ago um, 10,000 police officers got hired on and um, over a million kids got arrested and jailed um, so right now I'm previously I'm also previously incarcerated one of the biggest things like is once you get incarcerated, once you get like um, you get charged and whatnot, those things follow you for the rest of your life. You can't get housing, you can't go to go to school, you can't you can't do a lot of specific things, um, and it's very difficult. So, I think like you know all of this goes back to you know what what how, the safety of the kids and how 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 and their success. With all due respect, I do uh, respect. I understand that police officers have a hard job and whatnot, but at the same time. Um, I do want to, to have everybody consider how, how it feels to be a person of color and to go through, um, to go through life in having this constant, constant terror. And with all due respect, um, I do understand what terror is when it comes to not sleeping and whatnot. People of color go through this every single day of their life. Like, so I, don't want, I wouldn't want anybody um, to ever go through that when they're a kid. But, all right, that's it. Thank you, Abdul. Um... Next, we'll go to um, Tegan. Hello, can you hear? No, I'm clear. All right, I am Tegan Moon, and I am at 98 Wellington Road, and I am a student at Portland High, and I'm a student who's highly involved with um, drama and art and theater. Well, theater and drama, same thing, and, and music. So I think I have a pretty good idea of our co-curriculars and how much they've meant to me in the Portland Public Schools. So I kind of, obviously I've been in the Portland Public School system all my life, and I was a kid who struggled at school, in elementary school, for a while, particularly with math, and I had a lot of special help there but I don't think that helped me nearly as much as extracurriculars did. Because when I uh, joined extracurriculars, like band, and I did chorus for a while, and eventually theater, that's where I started to gain my confidence in my abilities as a person and my place in the world and like what I am good at as a person and meeting other people who have the same interests and who are good at the same things. And that helped me boost my academic level and my ability to do well in school. Because I think a good deal of what my lack of success in early elementary school was, was just a lack of self-confidence. 
And I'm not saying that other students don't have other factors limiting them from doing well in academics, but I think co-curriculars, and it's not just an I think, it's I am pretty sure that uh, nearly certain that co-curriculars and um, me being able to participate in the arts was what enabled me to do better in my academics and has helped me and I wouldn't have been on top of that wouldn't have been able to realize my even just my whole identity as a person without the arts and school co-curriculars in my life uh, and I also would like to speak for some of my peers in myself too, where co-curriculars and particularly our drama club at Portland High School uh, helps a lot of us with our mental health. And it's our thing that we look forward to in the day and helps us get through. And it's our own little family and it's, really important to us and it would probably be one of the worst things if that were to be cut from our school and um, I think that co-curriculars are, uh, are essential to um, the school experience of students. Thank you, Tegan. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we'll go to Olivia Bean. Me now. Yep, we can hear you. Great, thank you. Um, my name is Olivia Bean. Um, I'm a teacher at Portland High School um, and I'm also a Portland resident on Casco Street. Um, there's three things that I wanna talk about. Um, COLAs, co-curriculars, and the SRO. Um, as someone who lives in Portland, I live really close to Portland High um, in Bayside. And times are tough for everyone right now because of COVID and being unprecedented, but um, with the way Portland's changing without a cost of living increase next year, I'm going to have to move out of my apartment because it's like not affordable otherwise. Um, and it's important to me to be in the neighborhood that my school is in. Um, so colas are really important to stick around. Um, in terms of co-curriculars, I am the advisor for ski club, uh, which is an unpaid position. Um, and it just requires chaperoning one night a week and doing some things online, but that's an extra nine hours to my week that's already 60 to 80 hours long. Um, when I think about how much time coaches and drama club advisors and student council advisors have to spend, um, they deserve to be compensated for that. And and they can't volunteer for the job. I have the luxury of doing that because I don't have a family. Other people don't. Um, and so you're going to lose those co-curricular opportunities that are super important to students. Um, and lastly, on SROs, um, I am a Black woman, and I'm also a younger teacher, um, which I think is important because I've grown up grown up on the side of having police in school um, and with school shooting being concerned and now I'm on the teacher side for that and I the officer business and the SRO position is not police officers in school um, I think it works harder to keep them out of schools there are many issues that I've heard of in the halls or dealt with myself that stayed within the school and were not made into criminal matters because we had an SRO around. Um, I did lots of research in college and activism, and I'm well aware of the school to prison pipeline, and it's very important to me, but our SRO is not a part of that. He's truly a school resource officer, not a policeman. Um, there are students who go to him ahead of time as preventative measures, students who have bonded with him. He keeps us, he stands in the hallway as kids are coming back from open campus. It is not a police presence in the school. It's very different than that. Um, and so while I understand people's concerns about school to prison pipeline and 
students of color being treated unfairly um, without being there to see the SRO every day and all the work he does to make sure that our students are having the same safe experience um, and not being unfairly disciplined. Um, you're not there to see that, and I am. Um, and as a person of color, I'm not a fan of policing, but I want an SRO to stay. That's it. All right, next. Um, uh, screen name says KAC. Hi, this is Catherine. Can you hear me? Yep, I don't care. Great. Um, my name is Kathleen Connolly. I live at 8 Liberty Way um, in Portland, and I am the mother of Vanessa Connolly, who is a sophomore at Portland High School. I work at WEX um, in the Leadership Global Talent Development role, and I'm speaking on behalf of the co-curricula um, reduction or elimination. My daughter, Vanessa, is a three-sport athlete and lives every day going to school to play sports. And she has listed out a couple questions that she'd like me to ask. One of the questions, not for response, but just for consideration is, has there been discussion, which was previously confirmed that there was discussion on how much money would be saved if Daring and Cortland sports that have lower involvement combined um, and, and helping to save money on field expenditures and other um, costs that are associated with having dual um, sports programs at both schools, for example, track, swimming, golf, wrestling, softball. Also knowing that because we have two large high schools in Portland, um, the, the population of each team is a lot less than it is for other um, teams that we play in other towns and cities. So that would support the um, increase in numbers for the schools to be um, sports to be successful. And the second question that we'd like to pose is because we canceled spring sports, um, which my daughter Vanessa is involved in softball, curious to know where the money went um, that would have been allocated for those spring sports as far as transportation, field trips, and other associated costs for those spring sports and what, if that money could be applied to the um, fall sports programs. And then the last point that my daughter Vanessa would like to make and myself as well, is wellness is a, is a serious consideration right now more, more than ever. And wellness includes the ability to, um, to exercise, to get outside, to get fresh air, to do things that um, students love. And it's really important for um, these students to have something to look forward to. And after school curricula, whether it be sports or other um, clubs associated with um, the school, is really important for them to have an opportunity to express their, um, their talents. And some of the concerns that we have is if the school decides to cancel fall sports, how is this going to impact the potential college opportunities um, for our students that are looking to actually get scholarships into colleges um, for the sports that they're playing? And how is this impacting or have we decided how it's impacting their mental health? And um, what are some of the things that have been considered? Thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. Next, uh, we'll go to um, Sheila Jepson, Principal Jepson. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, again, Sheila Jepson, I'm the principal at Portland High School and I live at 138 Walcott Street. I wanna speak in total favor of keeping our SRO in our building. It is unfortunate, the state of our country right now I ask that we all check our own personal bias when we think about what police officers across our country have done to students in other large cities. We surveyed our students. If we are serious about including student voice, then the almost 300 students that took our survey, of the 300 students, 90% of those students said, 
I like having an SRO at our school and I support having an SRO at our school that combined 90% of students, 93% of our students said they feel safer knowing that we have an SRO in our school. To me, that says it all. If we listen to our students and we listen to our staffs, where 95 of our staff members signed a letter that said, so we support having an SRO and the difference that that makes in our school, that is huge. It is not fair to say that research on SROs is what's happening in Portland, Maine. It is not. The reverse is true as Ms. Bean so well articulated. Our officers are keeping students out of the criminal system. They are working with them. They are mentors to them. They are making connections with them to keep them out of that system. It is not fair, nor is it accurate, to have elementary students weigh in on their thoughts about a police officer in their school. Of course they would say no. They're 10 or 11 or nine or younger. We don't ask them what they like about girls or do they like slow dancing with a girl or kissing a girl? at this time of their life? Of course not. Please listen to our students. They are really the voice and we need to pay attention to that. If we were to get bulletproof windows and doors in our school, as one respondent uh, suggested, it would cost probably 10 to 20 times more than having one officer in each of our large comprehensive high schools. Regarding co-curricular, I think we all know how important co-curriculars are to our students. They are essential. They help our students develop leadership skills. As, as Tegan so well said, they are the lifeline for many of our students, from sports to clubs to music to drama. They are essential for our students. And please, please do not cut any deeper in our co-curricular. It will be devastating to our school and our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go to Sarah Ober. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, I'm Sarah Obari. I live at 37 Birchwood uh, Drive in Portland. I have two children that uh, attend Portland Public Schools, an elementary uh, student at Rowe and a Portland High School um, freshman. And I am a teacher leader at Portland High School and have been in Portland Public Schools for over 10 years. Um, first, I'd just like to say that I do not support eliminating um, our SRO position, Officer Benes, for similar reasons that other people have stated. Um, I would encourage if this becomes an item that is on the table, which I understand it's not at the time, but people wanna talk about it, um, that if it becomes a, an actual item that we're considering that you talk to the teachers and the students and the families um, who are at those schools um, currently, um, and that we don't focus um, just on what national research um, shows. Um, I, would, I won't speak exactly for my uh, son who is uh, black and attends Portland High School, um, but um, our conversations over the past year have been positive regarding our SRO at, at Portland Public School, at Portland High School. Um, second, I'd like to just talk about the uh, cutting any deeper into co-curricular. Um, my voice is a little bit shaky and it actually came about when Tegan was speaking, a former student of mine, and I had all kinds of points about co-curricular, but I'll focus on one. Um, my job at Portland High School is about transition from eighth grade to ninth grade. And I speak to a lot of families during that process. And one of the things they want to know and talk about most is what it's gonna feel like for their kid coming into Portland High and will they find their place? Um, and the thing that makes me be able to reassure families and students that they'll find their place um, is, really about the co-curricular programming that exists, the clubs, the sports, the activities, um, in addition to the relationships at, at Portland High that they'll build, build with their teachers. Um, finding your place at Portland High is about what Tegan um, expressed more eloquently than, than I am at the, at the moment. Next, um, I would encourage you to look at the 
uh, enrollment data for projections for um, next year. Um, enrollment is actually in for next year as far as who is enrolled in Portland Public Schools for next year and the numbers are different than what is there. Um, if you look at the overall change from the past three years to what's projected for next year and actually lies in Infinite Campus currently, Portland High has gained um, approximately 130 uh, students over those three years and Deering has lost 170. Um, I know we like to talk about it being a one-year shift, but really my experience and having to be part of this transition uh, over the past several years is that enrollment swings and it, it swings not just in one year, but it slowly swings um, over a two, three, four year period. And I've watched it swing both ways. I lost my job at, not lost my job, I moved from Deering High School to Portland High School because of an enrollment shift. Um, and then I watched as uh, Deering grew and Portland decreased and now I'm watching as Portland is increasing again. Um, Are you almost done? We, we uh, I just want to um, ask you to look for cuts that are farther away from students, things like professional tech services at $1.6 million. Um, there's still uh, transportation for field trips and with COVID and all of the things that are going on, um, that's 361000 and I wonder about making a one-year uh, commitment to eliminate that. Um, and I'm concerned about the new curriculum, specifically illustrative math. I could go on and on. I'm not a proponent of this program. I think that we should pause um, on implementing uh, and continuing that um, only in the middle schools or places where it already existed and allowing teachers to have more time. Asking teachers next year when we're unsure about even going back face to face to take on a new curriculum when we may be remote learning and in this time just does not make sense um, to me at all. So I ask you to just think about uh, pausing that, uh, that beta pilot uh, implementation in the elementary schools, um, which would save $100,000. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, All right, next we're going to Bill Weber. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I'm Bill Weber, a uh, parent living in uh, North Gearing. I, uh, I remember one morning when my oldest son was a junior at Portland High, and the SRO at that time was Officer Black, who came upon a man loading a gun in Freshman Alley. Uh, fortunately, there weren't any students in Freshman Alley at the time, and Officer Black was able to disarm and arrest the man. The man's target was not the school, but given the time of the day, 8 a.m. in the morning, a student could have easily become engaged with the man with tragic consequences. I believe it's the goal of the board to avoid budget impacts that are close to the students. I think the physical safety and well-being of the students is as close to the students as the teachers in the classroom. But that's my subjective opinion. I know the board and school districts strive to be data driven and make decisions based on facts and not personal bias. I sent the board some information yesterday on the number of service calls that the Portland Police Department keep records on. Chief Clark provided, provided this information at a seminar on SROs in Maine earlier this year at USM that board members Rodriguez and Figdor attended. The number of service calls were provided for three years at the three high schools, Portland High, Casco Bay, and Deering High. On the face of it, the number of service calls are roughly equivalent between the three high schools. But when you normalize the number of service calls per student population, it's very clear that there are fewer problems at the two schools, Portland High and Deering, that have an SRO. And I now understand that Casco Bay Principal Derek Pierce has also requested an SRO in his school. In summary, there is a physical risk to the students. This has been documented, and I am not fear-mongering. Secondly, the data clearly represents the value of the SRO position. Removing the SRO and endangering student safety, I think is reckless and extremely irresponsible. And I hope you will continue to fund these important positions. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're going to go to Kristen Majesco. Hi, can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. Great. Thanks. I'm a Portland resident on Westbrook Street and the mother of two Portland High School students. Uh, one of whom has been actually popping in to listen to this periodically and has found it really interesting and both of us and our entire family appreciate the work and the contributions of everyone on this call doing it day in and day out and those who've called in to express their opinion. This is tough stuff and we really appreciate it. I want to start by strongly supporting everything said by Betsy uh, Paz Gimnasio. I might be uh, butchering that name uh, and her um, the importance of the continuity and consistency of curriculum across the schools, for uh, particularly for those students who are moving from school to school with some frequency, uh, and her uh, commitment to, to the kids, and strongly applaud all the work that she and her colleagues do. They go above and beyond constantly. I also want to uh, really re-emphasize what we're hearing again and again, the importance of the co-curriculars in the high school experience. If we talk about what everyone here, I believe, is committed to, the Portland promise of equity, that starts with kids wanting to be in school and wanting to stay in school. When this topic came up uh, today, of potential cuts beyond what seemed to be very thoughtful, collaborative cuts that uh, Mr. O'Leary has put together uh, with his colleagues at Deering, that, that seemed to be, you know, if it needs to be done, done thoughtfully, anything beyond that would really be devastating. As we talked about today, the response of one of my kids was, what, you cut sports, you cut soccer? Just kids aren't gonna be, you don't know how many kids aren't gonna be at school. These are things that keep kids connected, they keep them motivated, they keep them surrounded by teammates who urge them, who want them to be on that field, want them to be at practice, want them to be their best. I echo uh, the words of Chair Rodriguez, who we can, the, the superintendent has made a, a, a reasonable suggestion, but anything more than that uh, would really be devastating. And it's, it's the concept of having that there as a backstop seems to leave that pretty uh, wide open. Um, and I think it's something we, we need to avoid for the well-being of all our kids and families, everyone in this time more than ever needs to have the, the social support, the networks, the confidence, and the, frankly, ability to go out and, and go run around with friends in these stressful times. So thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, next, we'll go to Andrew Levinsky. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea Levinsky. I'm the Extended Learning Opportunities to coordinator at Portland High School, in addition to a Deering High School graduate. Um, I live in South Portland. Um, I just wanted to echo what my colleagues have said about keeping the cuts as far away from uh, students and teachers as possible. Um, I looked through the document of the contracted services and would love um, to suggest some potential areas. I think that could be considered, such as um, $6,500 for LinkedIn training, um, $30,000 for foster grandparents, $36,000 for the TNTP survey, um, $17,500 just listed as contracted services for the school board, $10,000 listed as contracted services for the assistant superintendent. Um, so as my colleagues have said, I think there are cuts available that would less um, affect both students and teachers because we know that co-curriculars are so important and we know that teachers work so hard and deserve that COLA. Um, thank you very much and I'm happy to email out um, my findings to you as well. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, next, we're going to, sorry. Uh, Meg ba uh, Belts, ba I'm sorry, Baltis, excuse me. Hello? Yep. Hi, my name is Meg Baltis. I'm a junior at Portland High School. I'm a student council member, class president, and member of many clubs, including being president of Mock Trial, president of Academic Decathlon, president of Model UN, and president of the Environment Club. 
These clubs have helped shape my high school experience, helped me understand my purpose, and helped me make crucial decisions about my future. This is what high school is about, and taking away these opportunities is detrimental. My younger brother deserves the same opportunities that I have been granted in high school. I'd also like to speak to the elimination of our school resource officer, Officer Bennis. I would first like to state my agreement with the information previously presented about the problems that can come with the presence of SROs. I'm a member of Maine Youth Corps and have had many personal experiences with trying to prohibit the school to prison pipeline. I understand the conflicts that have occurred in other schools around the country, but Officer Bennis is not part of this dilemma, but part of the solution. At many youth court hearings, SROs have shown to be some of the most important figures in student lives and are committed to helping all the students set themselves up for a better path. The school board should address this problem in regards to the current situation, instead of simply relying on facts about other districts. I have personal experience with SROs, and Officer Bennis is an integral part of Portland High School. He's a friendly face for all students, and the connections he makes help to form a positive school community. Every morning and every afternoon, he stands by the doors with a huge smile on his face, welcoming or saying goodbye to all students. You can often find a group of students surrounding him, talking about their needs or just having a lighthearted conversation. His infectious energy and confidence make students feel physically safe, but also emotionally safe. He spends extra time every day to form connections with students. This is not something the school requires him to do. He chooses to do this. Every single student I know at PHS loves Officer Bennis. Familiarity is so important, especially within power dynamics. He understands this better than anyone and is helping to make change in the student-police relationships. The significance of this does not go unnoticed as all students should feel safe to receive their education. He was featured in an article written by the Portland Press Herald titled, Lessons to Learn from a School Resource Officer. He was also subject of a PHS school newspaper article that highlights Officer Bennis' importance to the school. These art articles highlighted the artwork Officer Bennis has created of students from school. It is such a special way to make all feel unique and seen among the sea of students. He appreciates everyone at PHS and in turn, he has made himself a figurehead of, for friendship, safety, and community. I cannot think of anyone better suited for this job. PHS wouldn't be PHS without him. I also think that it is important to recognize that Portland High School has been giving the input of the administration, teachers, and students who have been overwhelmingly showing support of keeping SROs and co-curriculars in high schools. Many have spoken tonight. 300 students responded to the survey, and almost 100 teachers signed a petition in favor of keeping SROs in school. This is a factor that I think you should consider in future discussions. Make of that what you will. Thank you and good night. Thank you, Meg. All right, next we're going to Rose Watson. Hi, um, my name is Rose Watson. I live in the West End and I'm a graduating senior from Portland High School and the current student body president. I'd like to address two issues from a pretty personal standpoint tonight. The first is about um, SROs, specifically our very own Officer Bennis. Officer Bennis is what I believe community policing should be. Officer Bennis's presence at Portland High School normalizes police involvement in nonviolent settings. His friendliness mixed with his authority makes him a natural mentor to a number of students in the building, which is very evident by the groups of students found in his office daily. This is extremely beneficial to the Portland Police Department's image as well in their future involvement in schools and around high school age kids. Officer Bennis's role as a school resource officer is especially important and relevant at Portland High because we are the inner city school in Portland. With that being said, our students have become accustomed to some unfortunate realities of being in an urban neighborhood. It is not unusual to hear stories of verbal assault while right outside of our building as students have the opportunity to leave the campus for lunch. It is also not unusual that a car may be broken into while school is in session. These are not regular occurrences, but when they do take place, students know to go to Officer Bennis, who can offer immediate protection, comfort, and action. Just this past year, we had a threat to the school that resulted in an hour-long lockdown. Although we all came out of it fine, knowing that we had someone like Officer Bennis to lead the kids to safety was extremely encouraging. To speculate that the same would be true without an SRO is false. Officer Bennis is extremely special to Portland High and it would be a shame to lose him and the advantages that come with having him in the building. I would also like to voice my disagreement with the proposal to cut co-curricular activities like student government from the high schools. 
As I previously mentioned, I'm the student body president at Portland and student government has frankly been a lifeline for me throughout all four years of high school. I plan to attend UCLA next year and be a part of clubs similar to that of student council. My role as student council vice president last year and student council president this year were huge parts of my application to this school and 14 more. Our student government was instrumental in my, person, in my personal development throughout school and will continue to influence my decisions beyond. In addition to being student body president, I am captain of both volleyball and tennis teams, president of environment club, and a member of National Honor Society. These combined are my, big, my biggest resume builders. That being said, they are a result of the confidence and leadership skills that were cultivated while being a member of the student council and class executive board. I can confidently say that student government was one of the largest parts of my identity these past four years. Portland Public Schools preaches student voice and involvement, something Portland High staff, parents, and students has exercised vehemently the past two nights, and I'm really proud to be a part of that. Without student government, Portland Public Schools loses a huge part of what makes being a student so worthwhile. I am candidly uncomfortable with the idea of decisions around school being made without the input of students. One of my favorite parts of this last year was the relationships I developed with our administration, particularly Ms. Jepson and Mr. O'Leary. Rose, are you almost done? We went over the three minutes. Uh, two more sentences. <laughs> it was reassuring to me as student body president that I had their ears and that they were so open to discussion. In short, student government is so important to the well-being of our students so that they may have a voice and a way to exercise important life skills for their future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. All right, next we're going to Kimberly um, Wyke. Good evening, hi, I am Kimberly Holmes, formerly Wyke, AP at Portland High School. I've lived in Portland for 24 years and both of my boys graduated from Portland High School. I have been the AP at Portland High for 14 years and no one should presume they know what is happening in our buildings and they know what is best for the safety of our high schools. None of you are on the front line, but I am. None of the statistics that have been highlighted tonight are representative of what I know to be at PHS. Putting the almighty dollar ahead of the safety of our staff and students is irresponsible. You don't live in our shoes and you cannot presume what we do or the lengths we go to to keep our buildings safe. I am a five foot woman with a powerful presentation. However, I can't begin to bring the level of safety that Steve and Mike bring to our buildings. They are not responsible for discipline. That is our job. We have a big job to do and most of the students will tell you they are more scared of me than they are of the SRO. With that said, over my past 14 years, I have been in some very hairy situations and without the quick response of the SROs, specifically my experiences with Steve and Mike, I am not sure what the results would be. They have come to my protection and handled some very threatening situations. We cannot ensure education without a safe building. Removing co-curricular funds will increase the demands of what I do as students will not have healthy outlets to engage in any longer. Shame on you for considering the almighty dollar over my safety the safety of our students and our staff. If you value the job that we do, then prove it by keeping the SRO and co-curriculars. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Um, next, we're going to Audrey Watson. Hello. Hello. Hi, um, my name is Audrey Watson and I'm a junior at Portland High School. I would like to speak to the proposed idea of eliminating co-curricular activities, specifically student government from PHS as a form of decreasing the Portland Public Schools budget. This year, I was the treasurer of student council. As treasurer, my, my role was to be responsible for all fiscal affairs going in and out of the council. I am involved in several other organizations at PHS, so I'm able to see from an insider's perspective the needs of each club. In my experience, the student council is the most cost-effective club with the most benefits to, the, to our school's community. Just to name a few events, we are responsible for the school's spirit week and pep rally, implying that sports and school spirit are somewhat reliant on our duties. 
Without student government, class events such as these will be left to the administration. This is not what Portland High School stands for. We encourage student voice and leadership. If this was taken away, it can be safe to say that most students wouldn't feel comfortable standing up for their ideas and expressing their creativity. Student Council specifically does so much good for the school. We fundraise all year in order to give out two senior scholarships, one in-house and one for the senior class. Although they may not be abundant in cost, it still shows that we care about the students. Another example is our beautification committee. Its mission is to make the school a more beautiful and cheerful place to go to school, a place where my peers feel at home and comfortable. I understand the difficulties that come with planning the school budget. However, student government is not where cuts should be made. The school board and city council should understand this better than anyone, considering members have run and won positions where they can use their leadership skills to make changes and improve upon their community. These ideals and motivations are fostered in high school, student council and class executive boards specifically. I would also like to show my deep appreciation for my fellow teachers, advisors, and peers from, student high, from Portland High School, the only high school so far that has spoken up during this public commentary. Thank you to my second family. Go Bulldog Nation. I love you guys. Thank you. Okay, next we're going to Danielle. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good evening. My name is Danielle Layton. I'm a resident of Portland on Dow Street. I deeply appreciate how thoughtfully and painstakingly you are approaching these challenging budget decisions and your acknowledgement that we are in this situation due to a per persistent and long-standing trend of underfunding education, prevention, and holistic safety structures. I'd like to comment tonight on the issue of cutting school resource officers to close the budget gap we face. I hear and empathize with the sentiments voiced by numerous school staff about the desire for safety and the belief that SROs deliver this safety. However, from my background as a researcher focusing particularly on school-based policing, I would like to offer that national research and local research do not support the belief that SROs deliver effective safety, whether we are talking about real or perceived safety. The most recent rigorous research to come out nationally on this topic reinforces numerous studies that have come before it, indicating that SROs and other visible security and surveillance measures do not produce greater feelings of safety for all students. Rather, they increase feelings of vulnerability for many students. This effect is especially pronounced for students of color. Local research done at the University of Southern Maine focusing on how Maine students experience SROs in their schools found that students experience the presence of SROs with a mixture of intimidation, some reassurance, but across the board, skepticism about whether SROs make them more safe or less safe. This is from students in Maine, including students in Portland high schools. Resourcing school safety strategies that account for the complexity of students' experiences is difficult, and the temptation is to focus selectively on the most convenient narrative to accommodate, which is the desire for reassurance. Yet it is critical that students' experiences inform our school safety strategies and the budgets that resource them. Knowing that students are anxious about the reality of school shootings, but by no means convinced that one or two police officers can prevent it happening to them, Schools need to be looking to other ways of promoting safety by prioritizing positive school climate and other ways of taking an active stance to end school shootings. The notion that SROs deliver real or perceived safety to all students is not backed by research. This is not about the two individual officers currently serving in Portland schools. It is about what role we want law enforcement to play in the school setting. I encourage the board to use all resources available to promote holistic school safety and well-being for students and staff, but SROs are not the only way nor the best way to create and maintain that safety. Thank you very much. Thank you, Danielle. We'll go. All right, next we're going to, uh, I think that's Michelle Lawless. Hi, am I unmuted? Great, thanks. My name is Michelle Lawless. I'm an ed tech at Portland High School and the president of the EdTech Union. I will be 
Um, I'm also a member of Portland Public Schools Equity Cohort for the last two years. And as a member of that cohort, and a human being who's committed to equity in all aspects of my life, I'm speaking out in support of our SROs. I too am familiar with some of the literature that our last speaker and others have cited that points out um, the problem of SROs as contributing to the school to prison pipeline. And as our last speaker um, contended, this actually is about the two particular officers in our schools, not about national trends. As a person who actually works in a school with an SRO, I witness <clears throat> an SRO who is committed to actively disrupting the school to prison pipeline on a daily basis. Like almost all of the adults in my building, our SRO builds relationships, makes community connections, and reaches out to some of the most disengaged alienated and lonely students in our schools. Mike Bennis, our SRO, leads his work with compassion, empathy, and cultural sensitivity. Everything we would want when we pursue equity. These relationships that he makes are critical in keeping students that are at risk out of the school to prison pipeline and those relationships serve to increase the safety of all students and staff in our high schools. Prior to March 17th, the evening news featured a daily school shooting. As my colleague Erica Winship Lee pointed out, we have already had an incident or two of weapons in Portland public schools. And because of that, SRO, we did not become a daily feature on the evening news. I applaud and I join you in your desire to work towards equity, but I implore you to understand that we will not achieve it by getting rid of two individuals who seek to build relationships and serve all of our students. In fact, you are compromising the safety of your students and your staff in your effort to chase equity. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. All right, next, uh, the screen name says B-A-Y-M. Hi, my name is Mark Bay and I'm a Portland High School alumni, a Portland High School um, parent, and uh, as a Portland High School uh, uh, a graduate uh, of last year. I work at Portland High School in the Bree Sport Classroom, and I work with students who, um, who have undergone significant trauma, and Officer Mike Bennis provides a, an amazing support for me in that role, in especially in diffusing situations before they come to the height where they could come to. Um, and my full support goes for continuing to keep Officer Bettis in that school. Um, his, um, it's not research that makes the difference, it's the person and his support is incredible. Um, I would also like to speak to the um, importance of continuing the um, co-curricular activities for students. My older student, uh, my older son uh, was recently accepted into Bowdoin or went to Bowdoin last year. And one of the big things that got him into Bowdoin was all of the extracurriculars that he did and participated in. And my younger student um, who is a junior is participating in those things. And I worry that without those same opportunities for him next year, that he won't have the same opportunities in my older student has. So I implore you to keep those co-curricular activities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to Jason McLeod.
Jason? I think I'm in now. Yes, there we go. You got me now? Yep, we can hear you. Go for it. All right, thank you. Uh, Jason McLeod, head football coach, Fulton High School. Um, been involved in coaching high school athletics for 22 years. In the, in the middle of there, or in the meantime, I've been coaching also youth sports, uh, middle school and collegiate as well. Um, can't tell you how many first-person experiences I've had with student athletes who play co-cooker sports, but also as well, this extends beyond um, those students that are both on and off the playing field. But um, I'm just right, merging the board here to really consider the any sort of co-curricular cuts. Um, for me, um, just speaking from my firsthand experience, it, it, it'll further widen the gap for underprivileged families. Um, it'll create additional gap for maybe privileged families that push themselves more towards AAU um, and sort of travel organizations that sometimes carry a very high price tag for it. But uh, hearing student athletes like, or students from Fulton High School, like Tegan and Meg be so passionate about their co-curricular activities and participation, to me is a, is a, is a statement or a testament to how important these are for the student athletes here. Um, kids come and play sports to act as a social mechanism, but also develop themselves and learn life lessons through the, through the sports as an avenue. They also use it to, as a refuge for circumstances outside of school that they like to get away from and have a positive experience within. So, um, as you can see or hear from all the, um, input we've gotten from the public, not one person has come and supported any cuts or additional cuts to sports or athletics at uh, uh, any school here in the district. So I, um, I heavily endorse uh, no additional cuts and um, hopefully we can, uh, we can um, continue supporting our student athletes at all the schools here. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, next we're going to Carrie Foster. I'm mute now. There you go. Okay, sounds good. All right, so hello everyone. I'm Carrie Foster. I'm the PEA president. I also live here in Portland at 101 Danforth Street. And first of all, I have to say it's 10.05, so I really appreciate all the hours everyone's putting in. Um, and I do appreciate you, the board, and CEO for considering all of our ideas. Of course, there are a ton of perspectives here at the table. And my goal in writing the letter that a few of you referenced earlier tonight was to make sure that you had the point of view from some of the people on the ground. Um, and I wanted to say, make those points to the public also. By design, you at the board and in central office have to take a bird's eye view of things and try to make decisions from there. And by design, we from our vital multilingual and multicultural staff, ed techs, base employees, administrators, and PEA members, uh, we're the ones with the most intimate knowledge of how this all plays out, all the decisions that you're making from that bird's eye view. And we're the ones who are in front of our students and their families every day in service. Maybe not now in front of, physically, but as much as we can be. And I also want people to remember that we are all on the same team and it is important that we understand each other's perspectives. So here's what I said in my letter for the benefit of the public not on the board. Um, first, regarding renegotiating or deciding not to consider any COLAs, I, I just, I don't see any way to sell that on the basis that a lot of what it's paying for is that scale up in curriculum or illustrative math and phonics that has also been referenced quite a lot tonight. Um, and I'll add something that I didn't write in my letter, which is something that I heard tonight, um, which is that it's also a way, this possible reduction, to create flexibility and anticipation of the unknown. Um, and I, I just want to point out that we've proved so well this year that we do have the ability to adjust and excel and be agile on the fly. I also think it's easy as a non-classroom teacher to recognize the benefit without knowing the extra time and energy it takes for teachers to learn and implement these new curriculums, but it is hard for classroom teachers um, knowing the reality to swallow what that means for them. The extra work can pay off in the long run, yes, but asking teachers to fund it with cuts in pay while expecting them to find the time and energy to implement it um, in an unpredictable and likely remote setting is not a good ask. They're concerned about the health and SEL of students themselves, 
taking this couple of months experience to refine and redesign their entire scope of work and how they do it, and trying to do so amidst family upheaval, economic uncertainty, and the idea that they might be putting themselves at risk for the well-being of our community next year. And like uh, someone said earlier, I believe it was Ms. Winship, um, we think about it all the time. We would take a bullet for these kids. We really would. And it's not a good circumstance, but it's also, it's, it's a concerted decision that we make. And we're trying to do this, consider whether we're putting ourselves um, at risk by trying to navigate the secondary and sometimes primary trauma that we see in front of us or that we have in front of us. Um, it's hard, so it's a hard, it's a hard ask to ask teachers to pay for us to give them extra work in the form of the extra hours per week it takes to learn and implement a brand new curriculum with fidelity. This is just not that time. Um, next, it's difficult to reconcile some of the investments versus co-curriculars. Am I running out of time? Yeah, Do you, tell me how much more you need. Um, I'll, I'll keep it really brief. Um, so, the basic point I wanted to make there is the, the proposal I put forward was to inventory our strengths. So for any of the budget lines um, that we contract out, I think that it would be a great idea to look at the existing resources we have and leverage them. We have really highly qualified, highly educated, uh, excellent specialists right here on staff in many of the different units. I'm not just talking PEA. It's a crisis. I want to get creative and efficient. I think we can pivot inward by using our strengths and lift everybody up. Remember that we're all in this together. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. All right, next we're going to Seneca. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I, my name is Seneca Wood Bailey, and I'm a sophomore at Portland High School. And I want to talk about the um, proposed cuts to co-curriculars and athletics. Um, I'm a multiple sport athlete, and I think cutting sports teams could um, be very harmful to people's mental health and other things beyond that. Um, Sports um, give people a sort of family, and you have all these other people that care so much about you and helps people get through school and academics and other things, and I think that's so important. I'm also a part of student government and multiple other clubs, and these clubs are a way that students can have a voice and a role in schools beyond just academics. To me, Student government has helped me gain my confidence and given me skills um, that are much needed in life and have helped me become a much better leader. And I think all clubs for people help them find their skills that they really need. And I think if these were cut, it'd be very harmful to students because these things give them a purpose beyond academics. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we're going to Mike Rosmus. Uh, good evening. I'd first like to say thank you to the entire board for taking on this important task. I'd also like to thank you all who have sat in front of your screens this whole time and completely listened to what we've had to say. You may not have been prepared for the length of time you would be here tonight. I think by the amount of people that are in the attendance, as illustrated by the fact that you have to increase the number of people allowed to attend, you see how important these topics are to the city of Portland parents and students. I'd also like to say bravo to the students of Portland High for standing up for their school. I'd like to speak to you about the co-curricular activities cuts. Co-curricular athletics provide outlets for students to express themselves socially, emotionally, and physically. These are activities that act as a release and help fight behavioral issues and issues such as depression. Students also learn skills 
that will be used throughout the rest of their lives. These are activities where a child who may be more introverted, may come from a lower income household, or may only have these activities as a safe place, can find somewhere they have, that they matter. Co-curriculars and athletics help children find self-worth, pride, value, and most importantly, friends. Having been a booster parent for my daughter's softball team for the past four years at, at Poland High, she graduated in 2018, and a complete volunteer assistant coach, I've seen firsthand how this is true at all levels of sports, from JV through varsity. She also played JV girls ice hockey her freshman year. A girl who didn't know how to skate found a sport that she absolutely loved and bonded with a team that became her family over four years. For her senior year, she made the winning goal during the girls ice hockey city cup game. Under your proposed cuts, she would never have had that. My son, a freshman at Portland High now, plays on the golf team this past fall, a sport that he has grown to love and a skill that he'll be able to use the rest of his life. Without a JV level, the varsity squad would have eight kids on it and the remainder 10 would never have stepped foot on that course. He also would have played baseball this fall if it wasn't for the COVID-19 pandemic. He would have played on the freshman or first team because of the large number of kids who go out for the sport. Again, under these proposed cuts, his baseball career would have ended in eighth grade. Cutting the lower levels of sports and any clubs harms our students by not giving them crucial opportunities. This also makes the only level of participation to be the highest level possible, which is varsity, making it an elite only activity, leaving all of other students behind. This is not fair to all students and needs to be reconsidered. I think the city can look at other lines items on their financial budget to find places where money can be cut, especially money that can be saved during the COVID pandemic. I've seen city workers cleaning and working on sports fields for the past six weeks and that are not being used, nor will be used for the rest of the spring or summer. This is money that can be saved easily from activities that are not needed. I ask you again to please reconsider the cuts of co-career activities and athletics in your budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right, next we're going to Nancy Harkins. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Nancy Harkins, Portland High School math teacher, 23 years of service for the district. I'm a Saco resident. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. We have had to make math cuts each year at Portland High School due to underfunding and understaffing. We have had to cut courses such as honors calculus, personal finance, SAT prep, math labs, and other support math classes. Our enrollment at Portland High School continues to grow with an estimate of 881 for next year, while Deering's is decreasing to 788, with the same amount of math teachers at each school. I have looked at the data, and according to Infinity Campus, the teacher-student ratio at Portland and at Casco Bay is 10.1 to 1 teacher, while Deering is 8.78 to 1. The Portland High Cut is not driven by data and I ask you to go back and take another look at this. Secondly, like my fellow colleagues and students, I am here to speak tonight in favor of keeping Mike Bemis as our SRO. He ensures building safety for all, not just our staff, but our students. You cannot base our decisions of SROs on national data. Until you spend a day today in a school building, you cannot say that an SRO is not needed. I teach at-risk kids, and Officer Bemis takes time out of his day to make relationships with my students to keep them in school. Third, I would like to talk about co-curriculars. Co-curriculars are more than just after-school activities. Kids learn life lessons, make forever friends, and focus their time, which increases their learning during school. Cutting activities such as math team that only enriches learning is ridiculous. It is our goal to increase math education and to cut programs like this and other activities is unreasonable. I'm a data-driven person and I know we can dig deeper into this budget to find the money that doesn't come out of the pockets of teachers, ed techs, and support staff or on the backs of our students. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, next, we're going to Ashley Daniels. <clears throat> Ashley. 
Ashley. Hi. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I am Ashley Daniels. I live at 36 Parkway Ave, and I am a sophomore at Portland High School. As a student at Portland, I love having the student resource officer because every day at school, he stands in the hallway greeting students, forming connections with us. And every day during lunch, I see him standing near the door, that's left open for our students, and how do you feel safe? Portland High is in the middle of downtown Portland, and having Officer Dennis at school makes me feel safe because I know he looks out for his students. As for the cut curriculum, I do not think this is the best way to save money. I participate in JV volleyball, varsity softball, student government, athlete, and music. I actually played with the orchestra at the year school board inauguration. <laughs> In regards to the non-athletic co-curriculars, I'm a very active member on Portland's math team. It is something that I'm very passionate about and I have been doing since the fifth grade. It's because of my six years on math team that I've been able to complete AP Calculus AB and BC having only been a sophomore. As for student government, I appreciate the opportunity it gives me to have a say in what goes on at school. I've been a member of Portland's Student Council both my freshman and sophomore year. And it's been very important not only to me but to my peers that we have a voice. In the end, I truly believe that eliminating co-curriculars is not, is going to harm the majority of students, especially those who are lucky to be in good colleges, but they are well-rounded. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Connection was a little bit iffy, but I think we were able to hear you most, most of what you said. Thank you. Um, Uh, next, we're going Michael uh, Daly. Ooh. Yep, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, good evening, and thank you all for your time and a uh, late night once again on behalf of our students. I'm Michael Daly, the co curricular director at Daring High School. I live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire on State Street, uh, but I've been trying to re relocate to Portland all year, so I'm open to hearing any leads. First and foremost, uh, and most importantly tonight, uh, it's with a heavy heart that I would like to make sure that we honor the passing of our junior, Blaine Alves, who passed away yesterday, tragically. Um, our community is hurting, uh, not just student athletes, all our students, our staff, our parents, our entire Deering community and Ram Nation. Um, so I'm sure that's why many of them are not on tonight, uh, sharing their thoughts as students and student athletes and love for Deering uh, and co-curriculars and their experience as part of Portland Public Schools. So please excuse them. I hope I can speak on their behalf. Uh, Blaine was a three sports student athlete and a leader and we send our hearts and prayers to his family and our school community and Ram Nation. Uh, we are in this together and I know these are very difficult decisions so I want to thank the board um, I've been participating in all of your meetings. I admire and respect your perspective and your exceptional work on behalf of our students, staff, and the community. And I am most thankful to the superintendent and his excellent central office team. Um, I think you all are doing great work and we are at this time in such an unprecedented crisis in time for all of us. So thank you very much for everything you're trying to do in dealing with very, very difficult choices. Um, the $140,000 in cuts for co-curriculars, the initial cuts, um, did include some inefficiencies, and it was a team approach between Daring and Portland with Rob and myself and the principals as well. What I can tell to the board, I'll tell the Daring community, we'll be okay. It's not great, but we will be okay. Uh, the per-pupil discussion 
um, and how that analysis is done. Certainly, that could be another discussion or analysis. I don't think it's a simple process at all and not very straightforward and certainly may involve an equity discussion, but we can have those discussions and analysis at another time. I assure you, nevertheless, that daring is on the rise. And I want to thank the board for their support. We are going to stay on the rise. But I also think that Portland and Casco Bay are exceptional too. I admire and respect all of our school cultures and communities, and I love the difference. And I love the committed and skilled peoples that we have throughout the district, at Casco Bay, at Portland, and at Deer. I think they're all exceptional. However, the $300,000 additional cuts that are proposed for co-curriculars um, are being looked at as being extracurricular. They are called co-curriculars because they are part of the curriculum. It is not an extra middle school or the high school, and we would be affecting long-term damage to the programs at the middle school and high school level by cutting co-curriculars further than we already have. As Ms. Jepson said, they are a lifeline for our students, and cuts would be devastating at another level beyond the 140,000. And as you heard from Rose at Portland and the other students, and you would hear from all of our Deering students as well, if they weren't mourning, um, this is part of their educational experience and it is termed educationally based athletics. And again, it is co-curricular, not extra. So I can attest to our Deering students' love and passion for their co-curriculars, their coaches, their advisors, their teachers, and their experiences um, with their clubs and activities and athletics. And additionally, I personally would forego any step or COLA to benefit our students during this crisis and work and give of myself personally and professionally as part of a team. We need, and I'm happy to work collectively as an effective team with Portland, Casco Bay, and throughout the district to make sure that we support all of our students and that we support the whole student. Co-curricular athletics is part of the social emotional learning for all students, but this needs to be a team approach and all of us is gonna to have to give a little. Lastly, I would just say, I would like to make sure that we maintain athletics at both high schools and maintain our unique, unique athletic cultures, which are so exceptional, which I love and celebrate and respect. We can combine where there are efficiencies, but I think we should maintain our unique athletic cultures at both schools and celebrate that. I think it's great for the city. I think it's great for Maine High School sports and it's great for all of us and we could do it all and we could do it all well and together as a team. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael. All right, next we're going to Linda Braley. Um, hi, I'm, my name is Amanda Thiel. I am daughter of Linda Grayley. Um, I will keep this brief. I just wanted to share my experience and build off of other students' perspectives. I graduated from Portland High School in 2019. I was captain of the math team and swim team. I also participated in cross country and JV soccer. And I was secretary of my class. All of these experiences were valuable for me. They helped me survive high school, which had significant social challenges. Throughout these programs and the teachers that supported them and me, I don't know how I would have survived high school. All these clubs helped teach me how to be engaged and involved and helped me succeed in college. Um, thank you, that is all I have to share. Thank you, Linda. Oh, sorry, that wasn't. <laughs> um, next, we're going to Sarah. Oh, I'm going to say this one right. Sarah Sissel? You nailed it. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much for staying up past at least my bedtime. Um, and I deeply appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to listen and to the community that's still on. Um, and I really deeply appreciate the incredibly difficult situation that you guys have in front of you. Um, so I'm, uh, my name is Sarah Sissel. I'm a second grade teacher at Riverton. Um, and I just wanted to say that as an elementary school teacher, I am really looking forward to our new math curriculum. Uh, I think it will make math more approachable and fill gaps. Uh, but having said that, I don't believe that next year is the year to implement across the district. 
Um, while I understand the argument of equalizing uh, across the district, um, I don't believe that it would be equitable for students and teachers. Considering the uncertainty of the year before us, requesting students to acclimate to a new curriculum with uh, new routines and potentially decreased supports, granted remote learning, um, it's an unfair request following. Um, so to follow that, to ask teachers to learn a new curriculum facing unpredictable SEL needs in the classroom and prolonged remote learning challenges, it seems unreasonable and unfortunately, uh, especially in the uh, addition to potential cuts to uh, our pay um, or to the, the COLAs. Um, but to delve deeper into the SEL needs and to echo what Ms. Nally said, um, these are really foundational to instruction. Uh, so I believe that any teacher can emphasize the importance of the SEL needs in the classroom. And that being said, Riverton recently received, uh, well, two years ago, an SEL coach um, who has really provided excellent supports and has, um, irrefut and has had an irrefutable positive effect on our school. Um, and it's really my unyielding opinion that that job is essential following this pandemic especially. And I realize that this position is funded through Title I, uh, which brings me to my final point. Um, and I won't pretend to know more about Title I than I do or, or anything else than I do. Um, but Riverton is facing a significant decrease in those funds. Uh, and it's my request in the idea of equity that the allocation of these funds be reviewed uh, with the needs of the individual schools in mind and less so about the percentages across um, across the district um, because a blanket percentage really eliminates the humanity of it um, and that we are not just numbers or percentages you know same goes for the other levels of, of schools that are facing challenges as well um, but I really deeply do appreciate um, the challenges that we all face so thank you for your time thank you Sarah Next, we're going to the screen, the screen name says uh, Jay Dolly. Hi, can you hear me okay? We can. Okay, super. Hi, um, I'm a, a parent of a Deering High School student and I live on uh, Concord Street, just a stone's throw away from the school. And I just wanted to speak up tonight. Um, and I wanted to thank Michael Daly for speaking up for the Deering community tonight, as I did notice um, from a previous remark that there were was an idea that Deering's not really being represented here. Um, in general, I guess my statement is that I do think it's absolutely unacceptable for co-curriculars to be reduced at all. Um, as I think Marnie Marioni spoke earlier about, um, I'm a social worker and we already have a deficit in our schools in terms of, you know, mental health supports. And though it's not a direct um, activity that uh, is expected in our co-curriculars, it is certainly a huge part of what goes on, uh, the support and the teams and uh, the sort of relationships that come with all of those sports and uh, other activities. Also, um, I think someone else touched on, you know, going forward when our kids leave these high schools, they're going out into a world mixing with all the other communities that um, do get the funding and do have the socioeconomics that allow them to not face some of these challenges that, that Portland is facing. I grew up in one of those suburbs and chose to raise my daughter here in Portland because of the diversity. And, and I think the challenges are, are acceptable to a limit. But I agree with the general um, consensus here that we can't um, make these financial cuts um, so closely to our students and our teachers there are other ways to do budgets and find money and um, you know 
starting all the way up at the state level um, in the future. I hope we can make some really large changes to how this you know, system works so that we don't come down to, to this place where we think that there is even a possibility that any of these things are um, eliminated. And as far as the SROs, um, I know in Deering High School that um, the SRO there, um, is really um, Officer Black is really loved by the students as well, and um, he's he's somebody that um, like other people have remarked on about the Portland High School SRO is just really a, an important part of the school, and and Portland is not like a lot of the rest of the country, luckily. So you know I respect statistics and you know all of that sort of stuff, but we have a we have a different um, situation in our schools. So yeah, thank you very much for uh, hearing my perspective tonight. Thank you for sharing. Uh, next, uh, we'll go to Allison Dane. Allison? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I'm sorry that took a moment. Um, my name is Allison Dame. I'm one of the co-principals at Deering. Um, and I'll say again to you, thank you for staying up so late to hear our comments. Um, I recognize that you have heard less from Deering tonight and echoing Mr. Daly, I'd like to make you aware that we lost a student yesterday and many of our students and staff are in the midst of grief. Um, I want to offer my own perspective on two issues. First, the athletic and co-curricular budgets at the high school level, and second, the role SROs play in Portland high schools. Firstly, on co-curricular cuts, I want to offer another view on the per-pupil formula behind co-curricular and athletic funding. It is true that Deering's enrollment has been dropping, but it is also true that we as a staff and a community have worked very hard this year to rebuild our reputation in the community, and we are seeing a promising upward trend. Um, I want to make you aware that we don't do this work only for the sake of RAM pride. We do this because we believe the children of Portland are best served by having three excellent choices for high schools. Our fear is that a per pupil formula may create a positive feedback loop that disadvantages whichever school happens to be trailing when it comes to Portland's school choice process. We are trying to take a long-term view on the health of the school system as a whole. Whichever school a student cho chooses, Let's make sure they have access to an equally rich array of co-curriculars and athletics. The alternative is a tale of two cities with ever increasing disparities. We also see that while this formula makes sense on a cursory glance, the reality is that Deering has proportionally more students of color and more low-income students than the other two high schools. Please take a step back and think about the equity impacts of a policy that results in less resources for the school that houses more of our most vulnerable students. We do not want to approach this in a partisan way. We would be open to a reasonable formula that differentiates the costs that are elastic, like student uniforms, to those that are not, like the existence of a robust drama program. But this cannot be a tug of war. For the sake of our students, it needs to be about filling three buckets according to student needs so that all students walk up to an equal well. No matter which doors they walk through, students should have an equal opportunity to excel. Secondly, on the topic of SROs, I would echo many other high school students and teachers as well as Principal Debson. Please, please listen to the students, teachers, and admin that are in our buildings. Each of those groups has different messages to tell you, but each in its own way will tell you that the impact of SROs on our schools is positive. We at Deering take the prison to pipeline problem seriously, and we conscientiously keep an eye on data around behaviors and race and income levels. But before using national data to make a conclusion on how these positions are impacting communities locally, please take a closer look. I think you will see that the SROs are welcome and important members of our high school communities, both at DHS and PHS. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ellen. All right, next, uh, the screen name says, Ed Edison or yeah, Edison. Hi, uh, I'm Edison. I'm a junior at Deering High School. And um, 
Uh, as you may know, the Deering community has just gone through a great loss um, with our fellow friend and classmate, Blaine Alvis. And as one of the presidents of student government, I can attest to the fact that student government and natural helpers and a few other clubs were the first to jump on that and create a list of resources for our community. And I find that very important that um, we were the first people to reach out and so that we made our students feel like they had a voice and they had someone to talk to. Um, I am strongly opposed to the idea of cutting co-curriculars such as student government and natural helpers with helps out, which helps out with mental health because a lot of these activities really, really help our community when we need help. Um, Officer Black also is a very friendly face. I'd like to speak on behalf of him. Uh, he's always someone that I can say hi to in the hallways and he makes everyone feel so much safer. Um, last year we had a threat of violence at our school and Officer Black was sending out emails just making sure that everyone's okay and uh, making us all feel safe again. So I also strongly oppose getting rid of him and all the other school resource offices, officers that I've heard about. Um, the Deering community right now is dealing with, again, the death of the classmate, so that's why a lot of the students can't be on here. Um, I also got a message from my fellow co-president, uh, Will Bedalment. He wanted me to say that, sorry, one second. Um, Officer Black is much more than a protection for students. He is a way for students to reach out in regards to mental health. The board must reconsider right now. Find the money elsewhere. Um, thank you so much. That's it. Thank you, Adam. All right, next we're going to Jen Cooper. Hey there. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Jen. Go for it. Okay, great. So my name's Jen Cooper. Um, I reside at 25 Autumn Lane. I'm a taxpayer, a parent of a middle schooler, a PPS faculty at Breathe Day Treatment, and a coach at Deering High School. Having listened to many of the meetings lately, I'm a little disheartened. I want to speak for a moment about the reduction of co-curriculars and the importance that they have um, for many people. Many people look at them as just sports, and um, however, for many, it's uh, the reason that they show up to school every day. It is the hook that gets them in through the door and as we all know once they are in school the possibilities are endless i personally know this effect i was one of those kids who didn't feel successful in school however on the field i was strong and confident it was the reason i came to school every day so that i could practice and play if it weren't for sports keeping me in school i may have i may not have continued my education and become an educator having an impact on students in our community the importance of co-curricular activities have been studied and measured. A 2017 study reported by the NFHS found that the GPAs of high school athletes was 2.84 compared to 2.68. Uh, this swing, uh, this sorry, the survey also showed that student athletes miss less school days than non-athletes. Co-curricular activities produce social relationships. Uh, leadership skills, teamwork, cooperation, and patience, all of which make better leaders for our community and work towards the whole student goal and the Portland Promise. Parents may look to other communities that will give their child both an education and an act and activities if we make these cuts. Or parents can look to club sports to give their child advantages to make teams. That would not be equitable to all those who are unable to afford to do so. Again, creating a gap instead of keeping the Portland promise. Also eliminating colas and steps and stipends are all staff and student reductions. Chair Rodriguez said it so well last night, coming back from a pandemic with students and staff feeling stress, is this the best time to make an investment in the futures with the scale up curriculum? It seems like an investment that large would be better suited for a time when staff and students are healthy and ready to take on the challenge. Also, the pre-K pre expansion. Over the last few years, there have been many expansions to programs in Portland. Before we expand, shouldn't we make sure that the ones we have in place are running well? And lastly, as Gavin, an earlier speaker, stated, I would love to work only as an ed tech. I would love to do that every day 
as much as possible. However, I can't survive on just my paycheck. That's why I'm a coach, a trainer, a camp counselor, as along with being an ed tech. So every cut affects us. Thank you for keeping these things in mind when you're making your cuts. Thank you, Jen. All right, next, um, Dr. Ahmed, Abdullahi Ahmed. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, good evening, and thank you very much for staying this late uh, and listening to us. Uh, uh, I live in Portland, and I have three kids who were going to the schools in Portland Public Schools, and uh, my daughter graduated last year from Deering High School, and I'm one of the co-principals at Deering High School. Uh, first of all, I want to... Uh, command the work and uh, the presence of Officer Black in our school and and I support uh, Officer Black's uh, presence in our school and uh, yet I want to uh, mention that uh, we don't want to reduce the uh, the relationship between uh, the minority students and and uh, the police in the nation and all over the country to Officer Black and, and the students' relationship with him. So uh, in other words, I would say Officer Black is a great man and, and, and very kind, and his students feel very comfortable talking to him. And, 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 uh, but that is his personality. So I would argue with the board and... Uh, uh, to come up with uh, guidelines which is uh, different than the the policing guidelines that or or uh, M MOU which is very uh, understanding and and the fears that the minority students not in again uh, that they have uh, uh, about officer black but in general because we cannot deny that there is uh, uh, the relationship between the uh, police in the nation uh, and the kids of color, especially black boys, is not a good relation. So we need to be very clear that and to not reduce to Officer Black and Officer Benz and say that everything is going very well for this and that's not what is happening in the nation. So, uh, and we are part of the nation. So I, I want... Uh, if Officer Black leaves the Deering High School, I want to know uh, what are the guidelines and what are these uh, uh, MOUs that whoever comes will be working with uh, the students. So we cannot build uh, the relationship on only one or two officers who are by nature, they're uh, good people who happen to be the officers. But uh, so uh, what I'm asking the board to come up with these guidelines Another thing also, I want uh, to say that uh, what uh, Ms. Daly and Mr. Uh, Mr. Daly and Ms. Dame mentioned about uh, being one school system, that uh, it's not like taking from Deering and giving to Portland, uh, but it is all of us, we share students, and the students in Portland Public Schools are our students, and uh, we need to. Uh, the resources which are limited we have, we need to divide it in equitable uh, uh, fashion where every student's needs are met. And uh, uh, I could uh, say that Deering High School has the highest number of uh, special needs students and uh, the kids of uh, minority students and kids who are with uh, language needs. And with that, uh, it may need more resources than other schools. So if we really uh, compare, as uh, some of my fellow educators uh, mentioning, like the ratios and the numbers, the difference between two schools are about 90 students. Those things may not necessarily like uh, be uh, constructive, but I, I would say like we are one school system and our students are our students and we need to be really working together to share the limited resources that we have and, and work together. So 
that's uh, also uh, I want to put that uh, on the air for all of us as educators and as a community. We need to attend to those of us who need most and and be collaborative in and uh, when we are reallocating resources. And I thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Next, uh, we're going to Elizabeth Capone Enriquez. Hello, good evening. Um, my name is Elizabeth Capone Enriquez. Some of you know me as Liz Capone Newton. Um, I live on North Street in Portland. And I have two kids that are in Portland Public Schools at LISEF. Um, I've also been a volunteer basketball coach at Lyman Moore in East End and the former coordinator of the School Based South Centers for the high schools in King. Um, the breadwinner in our household right now is a Portland Public School employee. And I am, you know, concerned and sad, but not surprised um, for my own family and all families of Portland Public School staff um, to hear talk about possible furloughs in terms of the coming school year. Um, I think that this zero sum conversation about cuts is demeaning to all of us. And when I say that, I mean um, students, families, staff, administration, the school board, um, and really every resident of the city of Portland. And I mean, I use that word demeaning um, because I think that school member, school board member Burke um, drew our attention to the key question, um, which kind of frames the five hours of this meeting tonight, which is which child do we eat? Um, and I think we all know that if we find ourselves having that kind of conversation, um, then we're focused on the wrong thing. Um, and so I want to read, to reorient us, um, I want to read briefly from the preamble uh, of the city charter for Portland. It says our government shall provide public education that enables all residents to acquire the knowledge and skills necessary to participate fully in Portland's civic, intellectual, cultural, and economic life in order to enrich and strengthen our community and our common future. Shall provide. So that's pretty strong language in terms of our city government responsibility. Um, and I'm gonna briefly read from Article 3, which is in the city charter, which establishes the school board um, section four, powers and duties. The Board of Pu Public Education shall have all the powers and perform all the duties in regard to the care and management, including sound fiscal management, conduct and control of the public schools of the city. Section five under the school budget, the superintendent shall submit to the school board budget estimates of the various sums required. The various sums required for the support of public schools for the ensuing fiscal year. Um, there's no mention about making sure that there's zero tax increase. Um, there is later in the same section, a mention of the school board and the city council or their designated subcommittees shall meet jointly at least twice to review dot, 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 the ability of the city to raise the necessary funds for the support of such proposed budget. So, and later on in that section, it says the school board shall submit to the city council a budget of the various sums required for the support of the public schools. Um, Mr. Are, you, are we almost, are we almost finishing up? I would ask to have my other three minutes. Go for it. Um, so this depends on the ability of the city to, to raise the necessary funds. Um, as a PHS teacher warned, we can't put the almighty dollar first, right? So the question that's crucial for all of us becomes, how do we raise the funds that are needed? And as one of the DHS, one of the Daring High co-principals said, you know, we want to take a long-term view on this, right? A lot of the support tonight has been for co-curriculars, which I completely understand and also agree with. I think it's common sense. What people have talked about is why do children want to come to school every day? 
and what do they really get from a benefit of those activities and I, we've also we also know that the conversation around equity that this district has been having has a lot to do with how children perform on standardized tests it's not everything about the conversation but it's some so as a school system if we want to get where we really need to go we probably can't deal with these things piecemeal right one by one separately right we're probably going to need to deal with what happens during the day having the exciting helpful things that children and youth enjoy about co-curriculars and extracurriculars actually being informing and integrated in to the learning academic learning that they do during the day that's possible here's my point we'll never get there with this with five hours of this type of conversation about a half a million dollars right it's a hundred and it's a hundred and twenty thousand million dollars sorry budget sorry 1.2 million <laughs> and this is we we have to be able to push our city government to recognize that there are ways that they can come up with the funds this city cannot be at once being found in an objective way to have more capacity for property tax income and yet somehow not be collecting it we have to be interested as people who live here in understanding why. Why aren't the funds being collected? Of course, there are broader conversations about the state and federal budget and how to get more money and how to fund schools equitably. But we also know that we have a good rating in terms of our credit as a city. We have the ability to borrow. This five hours on this type of conversation, it's not acceptable. We, we don't need to be making any of these types of Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. All right. Uh, next, um, Nicole Myers. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go for it. Okay, thank you. Um, and I wanted to just uh, reach out and say my condolences for um, a lost uh, youth um, uh, in our community. I'm very sorry for um, our loss. Um, I also wanted to thank everyone for um, your um, steadfast um, support uh, of our community and our education and our educators and our students. Um, Last night I spoke, I'm a teacher at King Middle School um, and resident of Portland. Uh, last night I spoke and gave um, a personal and emotional testimony. Um, and I've had some time to listen tonight and last night and do some processing. And um, I really think that last night I was coming from a place of fear and um, the unknown which I think a lot of us can relate to. Um, so with that tonight, I wanted to come because as an educator, I know that um, going into this uh, profession and um, caring about kids and loving kids um, and being a parent myself, that it's, it doesn't come without sacrifice. Um, and so I will be okay. My family will be okay. Um, moving forward, I'm wondering um, if or when uh, the superintendent goes to negotiate um, the colas. Um, I don't know much about these type of types of uh, employee or personnel cuts, but I'm wondering um, if something might be talked about or discussed or negotiated about furlough days. And the reason why I mention that um, is because I know that through the uh, pandemic unemployment assistance program, there is a way to apply for um, unemployment assistance through that program if you've been cut, if your hours have been cut because of the pandemic. And maybe we're here because of that and 
that might be a way, I guess, around, you know, taking a hit, but then maybe being able to recoup some of those, um, some of those funds that a teacher might, might lose. So uh, that was just a thought. Um, and I just wanted to, again, thank you all for your time and support. And uh, I hope everybody stays well and safe. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. <clears throat> Next, we're going to um, Jamal Murph. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, sorry, the late night, but my name is Jamal Murph. I live at 84 Hennessy Drive. I, I coach and teach at uh, EdTech at Darren High School. I'm also a PE teacher at Longfellow Elementary. I have a senior at Darren High School. Um, I want to let you just want to say that um, by cutting uh, co-curriculars and athletics, I don't believe we are keeping our Portland promise as um, equity, um, teaching a whole student. Uh, I come from a family growing up in New York that I relied on sports to get through life and to get to where I'm at right now, uh, get a degree in my master's. So I believe an outlet in, the, in the athletics is very important. And I'll be very short. And keeping our uh, SROs in our schools is very important. Also, our Office of Black is a key instrumental asset to our school. And by losing him, we are losing a, uh, a, a great person and a great asset of keeping our school safe, especially myself, my students, my family, and others. And thank you for everyone staying up late and listening. Thank you, Jamal. You're welcome. Uh, next, we'll go to, it says, uh, Olivia. Olivia, can you hear me? All right. Um, Olivia, I don't think um, we can hear you. I'm going to move on to the next person and then see if maybe we, we can try again. Uh, the next person, the uh, screen name says, is a number. It says 497744. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I'm Conrad Gabriel. I'm a senior at Deering High School. And so I kind of just want to dive right into it. And so I think these cuts are really unnecessary. And so like the first thing I really want to talk about is just learning beyond the educational barriers and walls that exist already within the Portland public school system. And what I mean by that is the very fact that like, yes, we have core, core curriculums and graduation requirements that we have to abide by, but those aren't always the ways that students learn best. And so coming from a student perspective where uh, I'm a first generation immigrant family and English was my second language, the experiences that co-curricular offers you is like nothing like no other. It's a chance to like adapt your skills that you need in the classroom outside the academic setting. And co-curriculars are the best way to do that. And so you learn as much as you do from your co-curriculars as you do from within the classroom walls. And so when you have stuff like debate or math team that encourages that and actually helps you tone your skills, those are so much more essential and so vital to developing the skills you need in a classroom. So when you consider cutting those, you consider it cutting the opportunities to the least well off in society. And so I think when you talk about education, that's the perspective you need to have. You need to have the perspective of caring for the people least well off because those are the people that need the help of a Portland public school system the most. And so that brings me into like my second point, which is the fact that by cutting out more programs within the Portland public school system, you're just widening the gap between those who have 
the privilege and the opportunity and excel versus those who are the least well off in society and these programs these co-curriculars facilitate that and facilitate the growth of that and so like when i stepped into my freshman year my english wasn't the best the way i articulate ideas wasn't the best and because of programs like debate team i'm able to articulate the ideas what i mean and get my point across and so when we have programs like these that help people help people build their skills and build them up and like close the gap, the opportunity gaps that we see in society, that's when you actually start to make a change. And I really want to connect that point to the goal of a Portland public school district system is to facilitate this goal of cultural and socioeconomic status and making sure that isn't a barrier within society and to encourage that. And the best way to do that is to have co-curriculars in addition to the education we already get. But not only that, something else that really disappoints me is the fact that we have to sit on a Zoom call to be able to discuss this. Portland Public School does this excellent thing where they champion student voice, but when it comes down to it, they only have a handful of students representing a variety of students ranging from the least well off to the most well off in society. And you can't simply represent that just by having four or five students on a, let's say, a committee board or a district board, or just having student governance. We need to be able to represent those. And so and an easy way that you could do this is literally pushing out a poll to just the student body in Portland, Maine and letting them know that they should be able to have their input on this. The fact that I had to hear from my friend that this was happening instead of getting an email is ridiculous because this is a uh, decision that is not only impacting me, but will impact other students. When you look at the adults who are making these decisions, you have to consider the impact. It's not on them, but it's on the students that they are affecting. And when you make these decisions, you have to consider not only the average student, but the least well off. This is something that's not happening. It's something... I just want to end my speeches by saying is that you can have as many positions for students as you want on these boards, but when will you recognize that a handful of students cannot be the mouthpiece for all students of all socioeconomic statuses? Thank you. Thank you. All right, next um, we're going to Nogor. I'm coming. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Dan Nogar. I work up at East End Community School. I uh, coordinate Rise and Shine, among many things that I do up there, and I'm really happy to uh, still be awake and with everyone tonight. First off, I just want to speak to the, uh, the music and the art, the physical, the physical education. I've seen music and art and physical education and sports transform lives. I'm uh, taking this out of the public education and any grade level or any school is really creating an enormous opportunity gap bigger than the one that already exists. The elementary school is where these seeds are planted and doing this just slices it right out of the culture and silences the dreams of Portland's youngest. Uh, the second thing I want to talk to is, you know, tonight I really don't come with any solutions in particular, but I, those of you that know me, I do tend to travel rather heavy on ideas. And one idea I'd like to put forward tonight is that, you know, COVID has somehow brought us closer together. Uh, looking at tonight, I see there's enormous potential for increased student voice, teacher voice, admin, ed techs, coaches, and community voice just through this type of technology tonight. And so I start to think to myself, what if a modern school district, for instance, had a central office that continued to do their work remotely? Could this happen? Uh, what if Portland Public School led the way into a new way of doing business and we started to pay attention to the many lessons that COVID is teaching us? Maybe this would even end up saving some money. I appreciate the opportunity to talk tonight. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Nover. Next, um, we're going to uh, Seth Bliss. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, uh, my name is Zev Bliss. I live at Seven Winding Way, and I'm an assistant teacher at Breakwater School in Portland in first and second grade. Uh, next year, I'll be in the ETEP program at USM, so, so I can get my master's in certification and be in public schools as well. Uh, I've actually been on the other side of this Zoom call, so to speak, uh, as a student rep in high school. So hi, Marnie and Sarah. Um, I'm hearing some really thoughtful and inspiring conversation tonight. And I feel really honored to be a part of the community of Portland educators. Um, I just wanna echo what other people have said and make sure that we remember that we are all on, in this together. Uh, this means investing in schools that need investment, promoting equity rather than equality, which would look like a per pupil allocation, uh, giving 
all things equally rather than to the populations what they need. Um, this means reaffirming our commitment and honoring our promises to teachers, not reducing the effective pay of hardworking teachers who already chose an undercompensated profession and are now reinventing it each day because of the circumstances we find ourselves in. Um, this means honoring the whole student and maintaining co-curriculars, recognizing the important role they play in students' lives. Uh, there's one thing that I want to go into a little deeper. Uh, education workers should not be pitted against one another. When we talk about equity in schools and cost of living adjustments not applying to workers in other bargaining groups, like central office workers or custodial workers, yes, that is a problem. And the solution is that this should be provided for everyone. We never advance, we never win, by focusing on removing rather than gaining. Uh, we need to look deeper into this budget, like my friend Andrea and many others have said tonight, to find cuts that do not affect the experiences of students or teachers. Um, I agree with postponing the introduction of a new math curriculum. Teachers are already, like I said, reinventing our work. Um, in closing, I just want to thank board member Burke and um, an earlier speaker, Elizabeth, um, for reminding us we, we can't choose between our children. Um, we, we need to refuse to choose between students and teachers or between this school or that school or between this group of students and that group. We cannot at once be found to have the capacity to pay for a robust and amazing education system, uh, which I understand is part of why some of, some of our funding got reduced and also not be doing that. Uh, we can't be having conversations about do we do this or do that. We need to have conversations about how do we do everything that we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Next, um, uh, next, uh, Will Battlement. Uh, hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. Uh, my co-president, Edison Pines, was on earlier to speak for me, um, but I fe felt the need that I just need to muster what I had and get back on here. Um, I think it's quite frankly appalling that student government and other co-curriculars are being defunded and cut. Student government gives many kids a voice that solves our problems and quite frankly like it makes a difference in our schools. Yes it may not seem that way to some people but it does. I moved to Maine about two years ago and sports such as cross country, track, and lacrosse have are like much of the reason I have friends in Maine. And it was extremely hard coming here from Massachusetts and not knowing anyone. Um, also, I completely understand how difficult these meetings are and having to stay up late as my father's the principal of Falmouth High School. Um, so I really, I understand that these are difficult, but it is, it's not okay that co-curriculars are being cut, sports are being cut, and in addition, our school resource, resource officer, Officer Black, who is one of the most kind and genuine men I've ever talked to, he smiles at me every day, says good morning, and I know for many more students than just me are like, he's much more than just a school resource officer. He, they go to them with his, or they go to him with their problems and many other things. And that's just on top of another layer that um, it's a means of protection for students at school. Um, and I really think the board needs to dig much deeper and find somewhere else to cut something out because co curriculars, our school resource officers, and sports are not where we have to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Will. All right, next, uh, Maddie Morrison. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Hi, I'm Maddie Morrison. I'm currently a sophomore at Deering High School. As an active member of many clubs in my school community, I feel that it is necessary for me to speak up in this discussion regarding extracurriculars. 
I am part of Student Government Key Club, Environmental Club, Daring's March for Our Lives chapter in GSA. I also play field hockey and lacrosse. These activities give me purpose in my school community. I agree with many of the students who have already spoken about the importance of these activities. Every student I know who has participated in Deering's extracurriculars has benefited greatly from them. As co-president of the freshman class last year, I was able to grow my leadership skills and develop as a person, leader, friend, and student. I really encourage everyone to take into account how influential extracurriculars are and can be in students' lives. I'd also like to mention that a lot of students depend on their sports teams to stay fit and physically healthy, especially on the JV level. The health of our students should always come first. That's all for now, thank you. Thank you, Maddie. Um, next, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna try to go back to Olivia um, and just see if we can get the audio going this time. Olivia? Yeah. Um, we can't hear Olivia, so we're going to Try to come back. Um, next, Cassidy Townsend. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Um, my name is Cassidy Townsend. I'm a sophomore at Portland High School, and I'm speaking on behalf of myself and the rest of the Portland High School Drama Club. Um, not only do co-curricular activities give others and myself reason to go to school every day, um, but they give us a sense of family, belonging, and purpose. The mental health of myself and my peers is also heavily reliant upon the health of my peers. I, personal, I personally believe that clubs, such as our Shakespeare Club, aid in the education of the arts. Many of my friends are interested in pursuing a future in the arts. And our Shakespeare director, Peter Brown, has aided in some of the best education and performing we have received in high school this far. Peter Brown would be unable to help us, however, if we were to follow through with the budget cuts. Thank you. Thank you, Cassidy. Next, um, we're going to Chuck Barnard. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Uh, I'm Chuck Barnard, I live here in Portland. Uh, my four children went through the Portland school system and all four graduated Portland High School over the past four years. Uh, I, I'm a teacher in another district nearby. Uh, first, having gone through <clears throat> excuse me, the budget process for other organizations. I do understand the challenges of prioritizing spending. Um, having said that, I look at the proposal of 1.4 million in new spending while making 900,000 in cuts elsewhere. And I have red flags go up. Co-curricular in particular are so valuable for helping to develop well-rounded young men and women. You should actually be looking to increase participation, not make cuts. Many of the top private schools in the country actually require participation. They value it so highly. Therefore, I seriously question prioritizing 295,000 in PK expansion at a time when you're proposing cutting 140,000 from co-curricular and plan to ask the union to renegotiate the COLAs at a savings of 100,000. Second, I also see 340,000 in cuts from central office, which seems much too low. I don't know how many people work at central office and what the total of the salary and benefits are, but if it's true, from what I hear that the list of central office employees take up several pages, I imagine it's a significant amount of money. Every time you keep one of those positions and cut a high school teacher, an SRO officer, a Spanish teacher, and of course coaches or co-curricular leaders, 
they're arguing that those central office staff people have a greater impact in the educational experience of the student than those teachers, SROs, and coaches or other staff members you're removing who directly build relationships with kids. I hope all of you on the school board think back to your own school experience to question that presupposition because I imagine your memories are more about those relationships and those are far more important for your educational experience. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Sean. All right, next we're going to Aria. Hi, my name is Aria Pines and I'm speaking on behalf of myself and Ella Graffius. We we're both freshmen at Deering High School. Um, I participate in Deering's Key Club, Student Government, March for Our Lives, and Model UN. We wanted to touch on subjects that we haven't heard addressed tonight. Yes, sports are important for the mental health of many students, but each and every co curricular activity offered at DHS makes a significant impact on student life and wellness. Things like math team, drama, key club, and student government are essential in paving the way for students' futures. Participating in student government prepares many students for leadership roles they will experience later in life. As the freshman class president, I've been able to voice the opinions of our class in order to change during high school for the better. Student voice is essential. High school is one of the most influential periods in our lives. Without co-curriculars, it's difficult to perform the best we can within the subjects we want to pursue. Ella and I take pride in our school's wide array of opportunities. Part of our diversity at Deering is in our activities and co-curriculars we choose. In a city that celebrates diversity, how can we strip this away? Clubs and sports assist in building important connections and becoming progressive individuals. To speak on the topic of SROs, we would like to voice the fact that Officer Black plays such an important role in our school community. In the first year of our high school journey, we have learned how much pride he takes in his job and our safety. He is normally the first person in the building and the last one to leave. Getting rid of SROs at schools would be taking away the first line of security and a great loss to our community. It should be said that student lives will be firsthand affected by your decision. Whether it's positive or negative is for you to decide. We understand the tough circumstances that we are under, but this decision should not be dealt with lightly. Lastly, we would like to send our love and give condolences to the Deering community and the Alvis family. We're all in this together. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Aria. <clears throat> all right, next, um, Hannah D. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Hannah Dustin and I am a senior at Portland High School. Um, I, what I was involved in most during my four years at Portland High School was drama at Shakespeare Club and also musical theater along with chorus. These are huge parts of my identity and I would not be the same person I am today if the, I did not have the experiences I had during my high school career in these clubs. It breaks my heart to say that I am the only student to represent Portland Public Schools at Maine All-State Choral Festivals the past four years. This, this has to change. And with no clubs um, going directly to music and chorus that are being well-funded, along with um, things like the Drama and Shakespeare Club, it, there is no way for students like me with my int vested interest in music and the arts, um, there's no way for us to thrive. I feel very strongly about this and I just wanted to, to um, let you guys know that um, the arts should be looked after in this decision making process. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Hannah. And next we're going to um, Ladislas um, Seyimana. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Ladislas, and uh, I'm, the, I'm a senior at Deering High School, and uh, I'm also the student body president. Um, as a student at Deering High School, I'm involved in uh, numerous clubs, uh, including the BSU, uh, the student government, uh, the MSA, the Deering Tech Team, and the Deering Robotic, Robotics Club. Um, I'd like to begin by saying that cutting down co-curricular activity is similar to, to and eliminating future skills. Uh, 
by cutting the by el, by eliminating co curricular activity during this time, we're potentially killing the future potentials of students. Um, as we have seen throughout history uh, or through within our schools, we have witnessed that through co curricular activity, many students find their identity. We have seen leaders of this of our nation rise. We've witnessed engineers being born. We've seen activists and other essential workers and members of our community find their passion. Uh, I believe that by cutting down uh, the funding is the same as silently killing the rise and making of these people. Um, I'd also like to mention that uh, uh, on, I'd, li I'd like to mention that on behalf of, uh, on uh, the SROs, uh, Officer Black is a really is an essential member of our community. Um, students all over, all around, just come to him for advice to talk to him. He's like his family. As I was like, we consider him as a family, as a family of the Deering community. Seeing him going away would be very impactful to our community. So um, I'd like to conclude by saying that. Uh, by, uh, I'd like to conclude by suggesting the reconsideration of the decision to cut down the funding of co-curricular activity. Um, and I'll just like to conclude by that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lani. And next, all right, we're gonna, <laughs> I, I really hope it works. Um, we're gonna try with Olivia again. Um, let's move in, we'll figure this out. Olivia? Can hear you. Olivia, I'm it, I'm confident that you can hear us. We're we're unable to hear you. Um but we see you've tried already a, a couple of times to try to get in here and speak to us. So I, I feel really um, it's unfortunate that we were not able to get you um, to speak to us. Yeah. Um, I don't see any other hands raised um, on our list of participants. And if Olivia wants to send her comments in writing, um, we will make sure that the board gets them as well. Yeah, thank you, Superintendent. That's good to point out. Um, we do have one final hand raised, and then after that, I think we'll we'll probably consider closing the public comment section. So we'll go to um, Jeff Patton. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to speak uh, as so many other Portland and Deering students and staff have before me tonight in favor of uh, maintaining the SRO positions. Uh, we've heard a lot uh, from, from both schools about how both Officer Bennis and Officer Black are important members of the community and are positive presences in the schools. And uh, I hope that, you know, before the public comment section started, it certainly seemed like some members were already decided that, uh, that they wanted to eliminate those positions. And I, I just hope that uh, after hearing so many, uh, so many people speak, specifically about how, how important these uh, two officers have been uh, in, as, as members of our school communities. Uh, I hope they're able to weigh that uh, against the, the few people who spoke, a uh, few members of the public who spoke in favor of eliminating those positions really could only uh, marshal national data. They, none of them were able to bring specific data showing that these uh, that these positions are not working well in Portland schools. Uh, so I, I just hope that uh, I hope that those members uh, have an open mind and, and have listened to 
all of us who uh, who actually interact with these officers and know that they are important members of of the Portland uh, Enduring High School communities. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. All right. Um, I I see Olivia with her hand raising, or I'm assuming Olivia is uh, her. Um, I think I'll, I'll give it one final try, but then I think what, what I what um, recommend is using the school board email address to send us your comments if you're not able to, um, we're not able to hear you now. And uh, a board member, Burke, uh, posted our email address on the chat if you're able to see that. Olivia, can you can you speak now? Can you hear us? Um, yes, I can hear you. Go for it. You have three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it took so long. Um, hi, my name is Olivia Bennett. I am a freshman at Portland High School. Um, I'm really nervous right now, so please forgive me for my shaky voice. I decided last year I wanted something more. I lived in a small town for so long, and I felt like I was missing out on so much. My twin brother has been going to school in Portland since preschool and seeing all of the opportunities he, opportunities he had and I didn't, I was so jealous. Um, when I started at Portland, I was so shy all the time. When I heard about Shakespeare Club, I was so excited, but I was too nervous to join by myself. Eventually, my friend Tess introduced me to this amazing club. I was able to learn more about who I am and what I am capable of. I've met people that have allowed me to be somebody I could have never have imagined I could be. Um, Officer Bennis, even through my hardest days, has helped me get through a few hours of school by just waving and wishing me a good morning. I feel like it would be extremely unfortunate if kids just a couple of years younger than me were, would not be able to experience this, the one year that I have at Portland High School. I really hope that those who have considered cutting the budget for Officer Bennis and co-curricular activities and clubs understand that the clubs and Officer Bennis are some of the reasons why people get out of bed and go to school. And I hope that they can understand that without these activities, there would be a lot more kids not even trying to get through the day. The motivation for many to keep their grades up are their after school activities. Honestly, I feel as if these budget cuts have not been very well thought out at all. Though it would be devastating to lose clubs and sports teams, losing Officer Bennis would be an absolutely terrible, um, for a lack of better words, contribution to our school. I truly hope that those who haven't taken into account the backlash that is bound to happen if and possibly when these clubs, sports teams, and the budget for Officer Bennis are cut. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Olivia. And I'm, I'm really happy that we were able to get you in there. <laughs> All right. So um, I don't see any other hands. So um, what we'll do is close the public, well, I see a hesitant hand. I've seen Rocco um, Franzilli's hand go up and down a couple of times. Hello, and Roberto. I'm here. Rocco. Yes, I'm here, Roberto. Um, Rocco, let's do it. I'm going to... We'll... It's not going to take long. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Rocco. We'll do it since, since we have you on mute. <laughs> All right, Roberto, can you hear me? Yes, go for it. Well, thank you. Um, uh, my name is Rocco Franzilli. I live at 13 Stonecrest Drive in Falmouth. I'm the boys varsity soccer coach at Portland High School, a position I've held for over 35 years. I'm also a retired Portland High School teacher with 40 years of experience. Just a quick few notes about the Cuts 2 co-curricular activities. Each year, Portland High School boys soccer has about 100 students try out for the team. Of those, over 80 are selected to play for first team, junior varsity, and varsity programs. As you know, the first team and JVs are the building blocks for the future varsity teams. Eliminating first team and JV programs would leave approximately 60 plus players on the outside. Where would these young people go and what would they do? Every student athlete looks forward to sports as an outlet to participate. For a lot of them, it's their only outlet. What does it mean? It means representing your school and community, staying fit, improving academics, developing friendships, finding positive role models. 
competing, leadership, teamwork, cooperation, sportsmanship, focus, commitment, trust, loyalty, positive self-esteem, time management, handling pressure, and risk-taking, attributes that will ho hopefully carry them success to success later in life. Taking this opportunity away from these young people would tear the very fabric of inclusion and interscholastic activities as we know it. With that, I hope you would revisit this item, and I thank you for your time and attention. I am out. Thank you, Rocco. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah, we're going to close the public hearing and move on to, um, we have to figure out what we're going to do about our business meeting, given the, the time.